of so and so, right. then it will be so and so and barony of. They need to be found under both and the in the beginning and stuff like that too. So there's things, things like that. So this this is the most boring job I ever. <laughs> It's it's terrible. So I'm so glad that that Dwayne Costa did it twice for me. So he well, should have good. a gold medal and, and all that stuff. But yeah, well, that's but good not, to hear. Yeah. So it, but this is oh, I, I probably have ten ten more days or something like that of this, and and it's 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 terrible. But it's yeah, but it needs to be done because it's very beneficial down the line to have it. But it's the last time I'm not going to do it this way ever, ever again. That's for sure. Okay. So far, so good. Things look good. Yeah. No glitches, no issues this time. I don't want to curse myself. Well, I cursed four or five times during the stream last Friday and it worked, so it was <laughs> good. Yep. Fun discussion points tonight. I only did four tonight because I, I think we're going to get stuck on the second one, which is the top 30 of all time. I think that yeah. discussion is going to be but, interesting. But these have been so good because we found so much good stuff to, oh, to dig and, into. And I found something that we could not explain on your map that uh -huh. now I know where it came from. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep, yep. It's really cool. So. So I read it back in the day, hey, and someone explained it to me, and then I forgot about the whole thing. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Yeah. What's up, Mike? You guys are all doing well. Finishing up the week, and then next week's five streams. But I'm going to be like uh, <laughs> hard pressed, uh, but just because I'm going to be coming back. From yeah, but that's the last before Christmas, right? Then you're off for the yes, rest yeah. of the year. Wednesday's my last <laughs> day of work for the year. Yep. But, you know, I just got to spend it down in Texas, uh, down at our corporate headquarters. Some training yeah. is going on. So. Getting a lot of uh, reminders out here. Everyone that's in chat doing well as we're getting rolling here. It. We got a new Troller Games vid, everyone, so. I like it when I get new vids. Mm -hmm. This one's very, uh, kind of a cool sentimental one. Which is neat. I like neat. Um, let's see, I want to go to seven. Bad. Sound check out there, you guys can hear me? Oh 
Thank awesome. You. Thank you all. <laughs> yep. Music's a bit loud on this one. All right, got it. Could be just this one. Yeah, it is. It's this one. Remember, I did a lot of moving around of stuff because I'm on this up. I'm on the new machine upstairs, so it also it, it, it puts it to uh, it, it sets it to the max in, within X Split, and then I gotta go in and re-edit them all, and that's probably what it is. So and I just downed it. I thought I got them all, but uh, I didn't get that one. So. Disc, disc, disc. Lots of good stuff here. Nice pile. Lots of Greyhawk content tonight, too. And that's really good. Yeah? So, yeah. Are we starting to get up there in the numbers now? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, let's, yeah. Let's, um, let's do this. There's the new ad. Okay. Looks kind of Disney-like so far. Yes, almost. Chuck did this. It's really nice. Wow. Very Christmassy. Yep. This, and if you weren't on last night, this is still good. You can go if you don't have them. Go to a troller game store and there's a download pack free. It's like five adventures, the adventurer's backpack and the uh, and the and the uh, player's handbook. All free. <laughs> I don't think uh, Alex I don't I don't think he'd be able to get away with that. It's basically a, a compilation of all their Christmas cards over the years. Patrick, Patrick, I have to admit something. You're not gonna like it, or maybe you don't care. I've eaten two bags of the potato chips already. <laughs> or munched on them. My son had some too. Well, the last bag I'm not touching because uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be gone for three days, and then the, the crew will be here on on Thursday, so they can. Yes. <laughs> Tim is MIA tonight right now, Troy. I'm not sure if he's going to be on. He really called in a lot of honeydew favors last night to come in last second in that game. <laughs> because he took he took, uh, he took April's place because April was really sick. So uh, uh -oh. yeah, he did me a big favor. And hey, so John. He's grounded for tonight. He's yeah. grounded. Yep. I guarantee you, especially all the old schoolers here, we're going to have a little, I don't, I'm not going to call it an argument, but you, but uh, I think you all should do this and I'll explain. Maybe we should do a cannon fire post on this. I think it would be a good idea, but we'll get there. We've got a really, yes, wanted Tim. Tim the Enchanter almost attacked the good guys last night, which was hysterical. He was so, he's so paranoid. He thought I was setting the trap for him. He's like, I know it's the people in the tower and it wasn't. <laughs> He almost fireballed them. Oh, that would have been great. Oh, so much <laughs> I forget. What, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Moose, it was hysterical. And thanks for all the... Uh, you and uh, and uh, Troy, thank you for all the anti-hero uh, uh, DM points. Uh, there was an age. Um, uh, the dwarf got aged. He got aged. He got hit once. The Rax got aged. I think what... Stuff like you at the end of the show. Oh, uh, I should I should go back to my other ad on this because this is over and it's closed down. But I imagine I can easily uh, we can someone wanted to get it late. I think I can work it out with Jeremy and get you in. Yeah, and uh, let's see what level. Uh, Robert the Crayon leveled. Crusader. Still feeling the way on the new machine with everything.
this is going to be a great discussion tonight, everyone. Uh, some really cool things. Oh, John D, I didn't even put this on your, uh, I didn't even put this out there on your, uh, Discord. I thought I did. I put it on there every once, but that's all right. I said I got so much going on in my head right now. Not at all. That's good. Starting up. Not right on time. I think Troy, one of your favorite adventures is in this, uh, in the very first one, Cannonball, and that's uh, Rangers and Black Guys. Hey, Phoenixie. Hello. Good to see you. This is our eighth one on these, Anna. Imagine that. Yeah. It's good. It, it, we can have a whole year of them. <laughs> yep. This will be a really nice discussion. Well, then I say that and uh, you know, it goes awry or whatever. Or once I'm like, ah, oh, you know what, I don't know about this show. And then they're great ones, right? It's always the way it is. Well, they were very useful for me, so, so uh, <laughs> I like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely a, a good chat up. I tried, I tried uh, to get, uh, it was too, way too short, I've just been so swamped with stuff. But uh, I was in consideration. I uh, wanted to see if Eric, Eric and Hemorrhoid could hop on, you know, just at some point. But yeah, that was, that was a little too last second. But that's okay. Yeah. It's a Sunday night. It's, it's, it's tough. Uh, one second. Troy wants... Troy wants to... Hey, Bill. What's up? So, Bill... Uh, um, Bill and Master Crafter, uh, Cannibal has a... It wants to put a bounty out on Timney Enchanter. Isn't that entertaining? I think that's that's awesome. Yes, good old paranoid Tim last night almost uh, almost uh, obliterated all the good guys because uh, he was. He, I guess I'm I'm that bad. I'm that paranoid of a D, you know. So I wrote two stories for the postfest about that. One from E. Oh, cool. So uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Jake Logan and with me is Anna Meyer finishing up this week. Four Hello. streams this week. Next week it'll be five when we're we're here um, next week. So we got a lot going on. Um, I only have set up four dungeons this week because I think we're going to... Hey, darling, we're going to get stuck at number two tonight. I think we'll, we'll be there a little bit, which is... There's nothing at all wrong with that. That'll be a, that'll be nice, actually, to, to go there. So, um, uh, thank you, everyone, for such a tremendous uh, Winter Nights Game Fest uh, game last night. I, I mean, yeah. As you can see from all the cheers, I put that up instead of the... the um, Gift subs is the uh, top on the on, on Twitter, man. It was uh, on Twitch. I'm sorry. It was pretty uh, pretty crazy as usual, and uh, we had a good time. And the whole audience, you know, um, um, really participated well. And the players had fun. And you know, like when I have uh, when I have certain pl people playing, darling bones and the rest of them. Hey, hey, yeah, sure. I don't need to. You know, I don't need to go there, right? I don't need to go there with the saucy stuff. They they handle it themselves. <laughs> so, so uh, film the fanny, the gnome of of of, of <laughs> darling was trying to hook up with anyone he could all night long, which was really it funny. was it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, oh, thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. so that that's probably the only Saturday night stream we're gonna have. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Rob posted something on Twitter, Troy, that he was. Uh, had no plans and he would be on. So, yeah. You will contact the Rope Makers Guild and, and make the arrangements. Yes, the Rope Makers Guild it tends to be the fronts for all the Assassin's Guilds in our game. So, uh-oh. But Tim the Enchanter, he's harmless. He's harmless. I mean, that's just a, 
a typical uh, dual class human character that uh, went a little too awry there, but it's kind of funny. So tonight, four, we got four um, really good. There's content in every single one of these. I look through these, and there's only one adventure I think I've run out of these, but um, but it's a really good one. It's a high level one, um, and, uh, and it comes a little later. Uh, but there's there's great content in all of them. We will get, and it's up now, number, the second one tonight, we will stop a bit here. All right, uh, you know, if we're lucky, uh, Gary Julian will be on at the time. Um, I, you know, I, I went through this, and I was like, oh, my gosh, all the I couldn't believe some of the names that uh, came up with this 30 greatest of all time. So, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, my gosh, okay, uh, that's from... Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to, the house burned to the ground, Troy. That's from um, the Untouchables. Nice quote. Um, but they got some unbelievable people in here. Uh, but I noticed one thing, Anna. They all yeah. have one in the top thirty from those. If they had an adventure, it's in. It's in there. So uh, as Eric has said, okay. it's a little political. You know. Yeah. So, but we'll, we'll, we can discuss that too. So uh, why don't we get cranking here, right off the bat? Um, you're going to finally see the end of um, our wonderful uh, Shackled City is finally going to end in this in these adventures. So, um, cool. Let's see if we can uh, start this off here. Found a YouTube who went over to Top 30 in brief. Wonder if you see a Top 50 with a 50th energy in some manner. I highly doubt it, Lando, because they don't want to go back to those old adventures. It's a different time. You know, they put the, this. This is just me thinking out loud. They put the disclaimers on them and drive through. I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong. I could be way off, but I don't think it, I don't think that they're they're interested in that. They're more interested in you know uh, subscription based, you know, things. So, what do you think, Anne, on that? Do we, they, <laughs> they're going to do a top fifty adventures of all time? I highly doubt it. No, I don't think so. I, I don't yeah. think they want to go back too far, so to right. speak. They they they. They might. They will mention the classics again, Tomb of Horrors, and 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 the ones they already mentioned. But I think they will stay, stay close to to home, so to speak. They they will yeah. they will mention a few Temple of Elemental Evil. They, they they will mention the one that they already included, made new versions of, and stuff like that. Maybe pick one other from from back in Soycanth or or something that hasn't gotten, uh, gotten attention, so to speak. Oh, so they possibly. might have one. Yeah, they might want to have one. But they have already made a new version of that we don't know, so to speak. So, so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they I'm, I'm sure they've taken at least one classic from from back in the day and made a new version of. And but that doesn't have to be a, a Greyhawk one, so to speak. That might be something else. A whole might bunch be, of reprints to uh, as possibilities yeah. tonight. Okay. Um, yeah. All the Forrest? giveaways that were yeah. not PDF because I haven't gotten them yet from from the guy, the powers that be from the con last night. So all the Dice and all that's all packed up, and I'll be away, but my wife's dropping them off at the post. I'll, you'll get them, yeah. you know, on Tuesday or Wednesday, wherever you are. So we, we got oh, getting all the giveaways going out. Yeah, I agree on that, unfortunately, uh, what you said there. I completely agree. Yeah, I think that yeah. they have something up their sleeve because it's a 50th anniversary. They need to have one from each decade or, or each edition or, or something like that. So, 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 but they Maybe. will get it and yeah, and they will, but they will make a new version of it and stuff like that. And, and they need to, to make sure it's not one of the real bad ones, so to speak. So, yeah. True Lando tells me the only portal is a bunch in there. Nah, is there yeah. like a 52 mm -hmm. months? My yep. gosh. And like I said, Nazwa, cool. one of the two PDFs. I will get that to you as soon as possible. Yeah. You and Cardman. So, Raider, um, so we got here, and look, I know uh, Keith Baker shows up here, and uh, Keith Baker was on Blue Box um, mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday. Anna was talking to yeah. him. So we actually have a, but it's not a Greyhawk, of course. It's a, it's Nebron, I believe, um, which is okay. And then we got a Chris Perkins one, which is Shackled City uh in this first uh, um series um but raiders of the black ice is right there. wolfgang bauer this is Greyhawk, right all all day long so oh yeah you're right that was richard knight keith thanks oh my gosh that yeah rich was... yeah richard baker yep <laughs> <laughs> that was keith richards not really oh my gosh my brain is off so there oh look at look at that carlos is on man good to see you dude Carlos, awesome. 
Well, Carlos, Hello. you want to you sit tight because in 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to give you my top 12 for my campaign that's published, in my opinion, okay? I'm going to go from 12 down to 1. After we, We'll talk about the top 30, actually, and then I'm going to give you my top 12 um, right down. And you guys can all argue with me. That's great. But I'm going to just tell you what, what my thoughts are on mine. And uh, so... Carlos, if you're not working and you you wanted to hop on and give you some of yours, you're more than welcome to, man. It's great to see yeah. you. Yeah. Great to see you, man. So, um, you know, always welcome to hop on for this discussion. So uh, this is a good – I mean, Wolfgang Bauer is, is a great writer. Mm-hmm. You know, and so this one's any setting, low <laughs> level. But it is it is it's really but, not. But you 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 jump past the the uh, the from the editor. It's a very important from the editor. Uh, it's a ve- uh, ve- very important. I did it on purpose. <laughs> I know that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because look, I am already ready for something. I'm gonna foreshadow. Yep. I'm already ready. So yeah, oh, we, we, we jump you, past. oh damn! I didn't want to. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't want to spill. Have, you have to spill your beans here. But I when I go past it, I couldn't resist. Yep. Well, very cool, Carlos. So hang out there and please give your input in chat. Yeah, what defines greatness? Mm, yeah. no, I don't want <laughs> to. I think the headline that. is fantastic. I don't know. Any, I have. I don't know any of his conclusions, but I think when it comes to those two, it's a great headline. It is. It, it is here. Yeah. And uh, see, look, it says here next issue a panel of expert game designers, editors, and fans, including Monty Cook, Ed Greenwood, and others. You know, and it talks. It talks about. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, uh, I don't even want to go. I, I can't. I can't. I'm skipping. No, no, no. We, we should. Be, exactly. Will, we should. We should. My head just will explode it. there. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it says ideally a four, four third level characters. Now here, for, if you have this adventure features many rules and creatures detailed in Frostburn. So if you have that re- that, that 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 reference in third edition, mastering the pearls of ice and snow, um, a copy of Frostburn might be helpful for this adventure. It's not necessary, but Raiders of the Black Ice by Wolfgang Bauer. So. Um, you, you really got a really fantastic uh, Greyhawk, true Greyhawk adventure as it talks um, It talks about Blackmore here, which is really neat. You know, how many adventures do we have up there uh, that are that are recent? Um, so it says here, Arch Baron, best know, Blackmore seems not to care. So um, I've, this is one I've not run. I never ran this one. Um, uh, you kept go, you kept Ghost Walk instead, Ruby. It's cool. Um uh la, 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 la. i think let me take it might take a look and make sure i can go over to there real quick it's not a problem this is me go to giveaways here uh you're in you're in orchid quinn orchid Orlando, wandering revaljex ntc all in so far you're good to go awesome so um here's the village den Tridun. and here's the map anna have has, have these locations been added I think I think they have. Here's I'm, I'm I know Tonsburg's on there, right? Oh yeah, and the Frost Citadel, Brink Islands, Tusking Stream, and Blackmore Bay Mosshold. Yeah, I think so. Yes, I think okay. so. This looks familiar to me. Okay. Yep. Yep. Vale of the Bite and stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. So, and here's the Burnial Forest. I know. Uh, um, Curtis has a group is adventuring up here in the Burnial Forest now. So, uh, yep. Awesome. Great to hear. So we got, yep, um, thank you. we got all those here, a desperate plea and, and well, you know, this level's really fun. Always, you know, third, fourth level. I always like, I like third through seventh, uh, you know, a nice map. It's of It's kind of the sweet spot of D and D in many yeah. ways. Yeah. Even in the old school days. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, uh, um, but yep. I can do ninth. No, no problem. My problem in old school, I guess it is everyone in fifth edition is you get the 13th. It's just hard. It's hard. Rounds take longer. Hey, Kern. You know, but um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you got an adventure right, right up there. Now you can run, uh, you know, um, and it, it, it is, it is all the things you think you're going to come across. We have snow goblins up here, wargs, you know, frost folk. So, um, and you got, you know, uh, you, you're going to be headed into the land of black ice, which is neat. And uh, here, so here's some of the special uh, rules for weather. You got a weather. We- excuse me, a weather t- uh, table mm-hmm. where, with blizzards and snowstorms and stuff. So, yeah, that, that's true. Yep. Uh, that's, oh, my gosh. Ugh. 
<laughs> that's that's wrong, Troy. <laughs> the, the blue bears, yeah. Yeah, the, the blue bug bears and the uh, yeah the clubbers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and once again, there's actually mammoths up here. Woolly mammoth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, we know they're not dinosaur era. You know, they're still uh, the mammal era there, entering the land of black ice and. Um, so you got some cool things. Snow spiders. That's another new kind of new thing to see. Check out the lichen. What page? Oh, here they are. Snowflake lichens. One to eight minus three. Let's see what they do here. Uh, cold aura. Any creature within ten, 10 feet of the plant must make it easier. Say, uh, oh, so it actually it burns you with frost. So frost burn. Yeah, Numbing but that, that's Ooh. realistic because you get this kind of burn so cold source. You can it, it burns in real life too? So, wow! From, from yep. and this is from you plants. Get burns. Yep. Yeah, this is from a lichen that lives up there in, the, in, the, in that area. That's neat. That's a cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, Wolfgang has always written great, great adventures. And here's the frozen citadel. Um, which is coming up. I love this picture. I love the purple hue yes, on this. That, yeah, exactly. That yeah. that illustration is really cool. I like one the, of my favorites. The... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one of my favorites. There. Um, let's see what we got here. I'm just hitting some shots. So, uh, uh, snowflake lichens, hundreds. Well, you don't want to go there then. And uh, you know, it's stuff all. It's all stuff that lower level uh, adventures can uh, adventures can handle here. Here's a, here's a here's a, a really cool item: the token of the mammoth, amulet of natural armor. But uh, you get to speak with animals' ability uh, with it. So, uh, alternate characters who attacked or helped slaughter the mammoth or its calf find that the token is not magical in their hands. Up, so, so if you did bad things and you can't use it, which is cool. Frozen Citadel maps. Maps are always great in this era. Fantastic mapping. Um, lots of frost folk and zombies wandering about here. So more frost folk. Wargs, dire wolf. There's your first, your first dire wolf there. Snow goblins, all within, all within this, uh, within this locale. Uh, that's a. Let me see what. What is that? Is that a? It looks like a golem of some sort. It's a. Nimble. Clockwork golem, okay. Yep. Cool. I like clockwork creatures. Uh, Mike Merles had that one, Durgram's Folly, um, that I placed in the Shieldlands. So once again, they give you, um, if you're into weather effects in your game, I'm like, it looks like I'm sitting low on this. I'm sorry. It, it's driving me crazy. There we go. A little better. Um, you, get, you have your survival on the ice abilities here, which is neat. The, nim yeah, the nimble right, that's it. Uh, this thing, the construct ten. So a ten hit die creature going against third and fourth level characters is kind of nasty. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it's a good picture of that. Of that it has an Eberron feel to it, but you know we there's constructs all throughout Greyhawk, and your modifiers de uh, depending on what you have. You know uh, what you have. Uh, you know if you boots of the north are one of the best items in old school you could have at this point because that makes you immune mm -hmm. to cold effects. Period. So, um, yep. And then it is severely cold up here. Uh, it gives you overland movement rates, which is neat. And skis, dog sled, really cool um, things for thought process that a normal, a normal adventure, because Greyhawk is so temperate, you don't think about. You know, and 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 that's a, that's a well. The, the parts we normally are in, in the mid to south parts, this kind of nice and cozy. But up there, it's it's cold. Yeah. Rexel, Rexel, I have not played in the Blackmore. I have not, but I know Same there's here. a lot of people that have, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, of, of the group. Not sacrilege like putting a Dragonborn in a Greyhawk game. Oh, anything for charity, Troy. See, that's all I can get away with it there. So, Wolf, and it gives you a little background on Wolfgang, but, uh, and how to scale it, but yeah, third level is the sweet spot on this, and, uh, um, uh, the cartoon here of uh, <laughs> the, the she's using she's using the, this guy's arm to uh, make uh, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, so there you go. Um, a, a really cool adventure for um, for low level that is specific to Greyhawk and specific to a very 
out of the way place that most of us don't adventure in, which is cool. We're great for a Blackmore base. Yeah, absolutely. I agree hundred <laughs> percent. Watch this mushroom. First, I pressed this recently severed hand onto this friendly acidic slime. <laughs> oh my gosh. By Tony Mosley. Anyone know Tony Mosley? That's a nope. good cartoon. <laughs> All right, Keith Baker. Um, not Richard Baker. This is Ebron. Yep. <clears throat> great artwork, though, too. Really great yes. artwork. So, yep. Yep. Mid level six to 12. We will, we will go through this real quick because we still have something else in this one. Ebron, Ebron, Ebron. Only $2. I got that. that. This is the era when the D20s are coming out and Dungeon Crawl Classics is doing some really great. Yeah. Uh, I have like every, I've run a ton of them in my campaign. A yep. ton of those. And that was like a one a way to get people uh, out. Yeah, good me games. Yep. yep. It is. It, it absolutely is. And hold on. I must have put it over in the other pile. He, he sent me... I have the Blackmore book here. It may be in my pile over there. Yeah. I, uh, he sent me the Blackmore book. It's really nicely done. Nicely printed up there, Rick's fellas. Really a nice job. All right. Next adventure path. Chris Perkins, who's still at, who's still there at WotC doing DMV yeah. stuff. He's been uh, around a long time doing cool stuff. Strike on Shatterhorn, Adventure Path Part Ten. So it's not ended yet, folks. <laughs> I thought the I thought nine was the last one, but uh we're still moving onward on this and we got we got more to go here. So we have uh uh, number 10 here uh, we're at 13th to 20th level you know usually 13th to 15th i think this one is as uh i know shatterhorn is on your map i didn't bring anna's map up because i didn't want to crash it i didn't want to take any chances <laughs> but i may pop you it up can use the web two. version that that works yeah, that'd be a good idea yeah. arneson's first fantasy campaign back in the 70s when the 80s girl out call out our play ground was right there uh, cool gatana wow so you were way back then so once again, Cauldron, and this is, uh, you know, they had just taken care of Hookface. Uh, and this is called, uh, the Cauldron number number 10. And here's the ruins of Shatterhorn where they're going to end up going. But, uh, you know, and the, like you said, this still at this time has not been placed really on the Greyhawk map. So after afterwards, it's going to get next. Now, I like this that they talk about Secrets of the Soul Pillars Dungeon 109, so they had a, a, re, uh, a connection back to that, too. With an appropriate sacrifice in the role of the God of Death. So, you, you know, you're saying, you're like, yeah, this is Greyhawk, but it's just, I don't know where it is at this time, you know? So, very cool. So, once again, we had one, I think one uh, viewer had, had played through this series, and that was it. On And here's the Ruins of Shatterhorn. Um, Another nice map, nice and crisp, but uh, you know we're talking about like the crazy, crazy. You know everything's in the two hundred to three hundred hit point realm here. You know a two hundred uh, ancient will of west two hundred hit point. I mean, we never had that in one e. <laughs> right? I never had a two hundred point hit point will of wisp ever. Well, and go to five e and you can have three four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty gross. That's pretty <clears throat> gross. Uh, that's crazy how. Um, so I, like I said, I, uh, that looks like almost like the under of the covenant. <laughs> I wish I, you know, like I said, I have never even scratched ink to start the, the top of the surface on these. This is, would take forever. I mean, we're talking for, for my guys, it's going to take running all of these would take two years. Yeah, that's true. Alex said, uh, I use voids Blackmore. He's like, I'm not going up there. There's too many uh, crazy things like the egg of coot. So, some cool, some cool picks. Like always, we're gonna have a really neat cauldron to pick. I think it's in the uh, next next issue. So, uh, yeah, you said super high level adventuring in this as it comes up. I mean, this this adventure passes you almost all the way up to twentieth. All these adventures, because <clears throat> mm -hmm. these aren't just like one adventure each time. They're series of you know, it's it, they're sandboxed a lot of them. 
Uh, so you're really, you know, going forever and ever and ever. And by the time you're done, you are almost 20th. And I guess this is uh, the first official one in D&D. You know, you had the Mirror of Denman. That one really wasn't an official one. But I have a published module. So Blackmore, there you go. Uh, so, Carlos, I've been doing this a lot, linking this, because we have a lot of people questioning it. But you want links right to... Link right to that adventure, man. I have no problem you doing that, so that everyone knows you have a Blackmore adventure. Because you, should, you know, you should, they should, everyone great. you should buy Carlos's stuff. Yep. Absolutely, please. No worries, Carlos. We're doing that. It's really good to see you too, man. On here, all right, and forever and ever and ever on this one. Scaling the adventure. Why would you need to scale this? <laughs> this is designed for four 18th level characters. <laughs> you might would need need to scale it up. That was the time of the epic handbook. Oh Remember my that? gosh, this is crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so uh, concludes as the final defeat, uh, defeat the final cage right in the ruins below the ancient Wanti fortress. Whew. Yet there's one final enemy, Akademarcus himself, and now an insane demon prince. So you know you got, you got it. You got it. You got to go to that. This is cool, though. They got some new feats and some new um, spells and magic items, which I, did. I didn't see them in previous adventures. So, uh, that's cool. Now, I've heard of this spell, Shadow Dagger, before. Thanks, Longshot. I've never heard of Shadow Puppeteer before, and I have a Shadow Mage, so I may actually pull this out and back convert this to 1E2E. Mm -hmm. I'm almost positive Shadow Dagger exists, but i got to take a look on that. So, now... Also in this, we have these, uh, this is part two of Monty's uh, suggestions, starting a new campaign, which is kind of cool. Yep. You know, which is a neat thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, where you, who are you going to invite? Oh, oh so uh, note, I'm gone three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm getting back Wednesday, like three o'clock. So uh, I don't have any of the banners or anything done for this week, but Anna, Mike, and I decided we're going to do something like on Wednesday. We're going to go, well, you think Greyhawk's empty? Well, here's where we'd adventure. We're going to do one of those kind of, it, right, Anna, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna pick some areas and say. We're going to take see. areas and take yeah. ad adventure ideas and where we want to go and, and have future campaigns and stuff like that and the reason why we uh -huh. want to do that. Yeah. So. Yep. Monty Cook, you know, everyone knows Monty Cook Games, and there we and go. And just like, yeah, last week we were deep into modules. This time we will deep, be deep into homebrew, so to speak. Yeah, so it'll be a, a homebrew deep opposite. discussion on Wednesday yeah. night. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of how-tos on the end of this, and uh, but you got two adventures yeah. here that are Greyhawk all the way. Yeah, uh, this is kind of a little bit unusual for Dungeon Magazine to have how-to articles and stuff. They are usually more in Dragon Magazine. Dunyan magazines are usually more straight adventures. So, so. Yeah, and I, I my th thinking on this is that they didn't, Eric did not want Living Greyhawk material in Dungeon and Dragon for ah, some reason. Yeah. And it went into Dungeon instead. That's my yep. thought on, mm -hmm. on what, what this, yep. yeah, I think. You have to ask him someday in the future yeah. what, what the... I said, I, I tried to I say, hey, yeah. you want to hop on for a what, what, no. what the divide between the two were or something back in the day. Yeah. All right. So now, all right, here comes the big one. And the reason all I did two after this is because I didn't know how far we get past this. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. 30. Yes. Now we're, we're going to. Oh, oh, someone's coming. On. <laughs> there he is. Awesome. Hello. Hey guys, how you you're, doing? Hey Carl, you at work? I can't stay too long. I'm at work tonight. Oh, uh, cool. But I want to show my face. That's so, awesome. It's great to see you, man. Yeah. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate. It. Yeah, the lure of adventures was uh, was was too much for me to resist. As well, this... you know, writing, writing my own adventures, I study these things like uh, like the, I'm getting ready to do a college dis dis dissertation for them. So I uh, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. Carlos I and Jay, all. Carlos and Jay, right there. There you go. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I was just looking at that today, as a matter of fact, a little bit. Yeah, um, just uh, gotta get uh, keep it cranking, man. We're all we're all mm -hmm. rocking and rolling here, Carlos. And I know you, you know your adventures are fantastic and exciting. Oh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I've got yep. a couple of them that uh, haven't actually gone on sale officially, so 
here in the uh, in the next year, I've already got two under my belt that uh, that are re ready to go and, and everything like that. And I've got a special surprise for the community planned here as soon as my artist is done. So oh, that's fantastic. I've got, I've got some good stuff ready. I want to talk to you about one thing I saw you post, and I agree with you 100. percent And that is AI art. You're going to stick with. Oh, you. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you have like you've listed like 10 artists or something. And I did. Why don't you uh, talk to the community about that real quick, if you if you could? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, I, it's really kind of off topic, but I, I don't mind talking about it. Oh, um, please. As everybody here probably knows, I'm uh, I'm Carlos Lysing. I'm the uh, owner and lead game designer for Castle Entertainment. We uh, write uh, Greyhawk modules. Um, you know, adventurous. Mm -hmm. And uh, in doing so, I, uh, I cross paths with a lot of artists, you know, we did, they do our covers and in some of our, our, our modules, we have uh, interior art that we have. Um, as you begin to work with artists or cartographers or colorists or layout people, wherever they might be, um, you know, you start to develop personal relationships with them and, uh, AI art, um, it's a great innovation. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's beautiful. I think it really brings uh, the ability. I think one thing that we always, a lot of us always wish like myself, I always wish I could draw. I wish I could be an artist. It would have saved me so much money and so much time, but it's just not my skill set. Um, I kind of went the other route and did, uh, you know, I, I, I went to be a writer. I, I, I painted with words rather than uh, with images. Uh, and I decided at some point in time that I would let, uh, you know, the people that were artists and cartographers and everything be artists and cartographers. And I would retain them to do those pieces of my module. Let me do what I do best or what I think I do best, what I do better than most. Let's put it that way. But anyway, um, what AI art essentially does is um, it's it's trained. It's a program that's trained by feeding examples of art into it. Now, on its face, that doesn't sound so bad. Uh, but what ends up happening is, let's say that um, Jay is an artist, and um, I feed his entire portfolio into there. Well, I can make an AI that will, you know, draw like Jay. But what happens to Jay? You know, you you you're doing all that stuff, and you're maybe maybe you're even getting that art for free, and from publisher, it's so luring. It's like, yeah, great, you know. 50 to 70 percent of my overhead is is now gone my my, my cost it becomes pure profit for me but is that worth putting jay out of business especially if i have a personal relationship yeah. that i've cultivated with him um the 10 artists i mentioned were all castle entertainment artists they've all done stuff for me in the past i missed a couple people i i, I realized in the uh you after check. my post There's i didn't check. do that on purpose but my point was being that um I wanted to make a stand and I wanted to tell everybody that, you know, Castle Entertainment is never going to use AI art. And it's not because I have anything per se against AI art. But what I do is I love my friends and I love the art community. And I realize that that's a person's livelihood. And uh, it's important to me to make sure that those people can eat and feed their kids and, you know, have Christmas dinner, like everybody, oh, need fest dinner, like all the rest of us. You know, I, um, it's important to me that those people, um, have the ability to, to make a living. They have some, they, they breathe life and soul into my work through their art and their cartography and everything like that. I'll, I'm not going to take food off of their table by resorting to AI art. And, and essentially, even though I think it's a great innovation on its face, as far as technology goes, it has the real potential to kill the art community. And if you do love art at one point in time, you know, we're going to be in a situation where, um, What's left to feed into there? Because artists won't be really a thing. Now, you're not getting new people. Yeah, maybe you're getting old old stuff, but I think it's important to remember that if you love the art community and you love art, you know, support the artists themselves. Dabble in AI art all you want, but um, as far as for sales, like book covers and things like that and interiors, um, because I think when you know you're doing it for yourself and you're 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 messing around at home or whatever. Yeah, for your home yeah, game, you're not fun. reselling it, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you want to put a, a, a piece of art on your character sheet, you know, or something like that. That There's no problem with that. I mean, because you weren't going to buy that art anyway from an artist. But right. when it comes to somebody like myself or Dungeon Magazine, and in fact, there's a big uh, argument right now. Tor Books just did a cover of one of their newest books, and it's got AI art on the cover. It's the first one that did that. Now, think about that for a second. You know, that's a, that's a major piece for, for an artist that, isn't going to be out there now. You know, how long is it going to be before we have all these magic cards? 
You know, there's a whole subculture of people that collect magic card art. What happens, you know, what happens then? So it's just a, we have to look look at the the unintended consequences of our acts sometimes. That's all. I didn't want to get off that topic, Carlos, but I saw your post on Facebook, and you, uh, out of all of us in the community, you do the most publishing out of all of us, right? Uh, in the uh, Great Hall community, you do. And I, wanted, and I saw that, and I respected that, and I just wanted to hear – I wanted to, everyone oh, to I hear. Oh, I appreciate what, it, man. Thank you for giving me the platform to yeah. speak about it. I don't want to pontificate it's okay. about it because I think that you know everybody has to make their own decisions. Right. right. But I do think that having an informed decision like that, you know, hearing the counterpoint – from somebody is is useful on that level. And by the way, if people are talking about this right now in the chat, um, I, I have no ability to see the chat right now because I'm on my mobile uh, and I'm doing Zoom at the same time. So forgive me if I'm not answering we're you good. directly. No, we're good. But yep, we okay. are good. So yeah. great one here, and let, we're gonna we're gonna run through the. How much time you got? You got fifteen? Uh, I probably have like ten minutes. All right, so we're, we're gonna go. We'll do the adventures after in this, after we do the top 30. How's that sound? Because we have okay, Carlos for great. that. All right. Let's we'll, do that. We'll do the top 30 here. So as I, sc- as I scroll through, um, th- the amount of work that went into this, as Gary Hulian has told us and Eric Mona, one of the 30 greatest of all time, Eric Mona, James Jacobs, and the Dungeon Design Panel. Listen to these names, Okay. You got Keith Baker, Wolfgang, Eric Boyd plays in my game now, right? I'm like, wow, Eric. Andy Collins, Snowlock Snowball Swarm, right? Monty Cook, Bruce Cordell, Ed Greenwood, Gary Hulian, Alan Kohler, Mike Merles, Perkins, Clark Peterson, Chris Pramus, Jane Rabe, John Ratliff, Bill Slevisek. Wow. I mean, what an unbelievable group of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Still know. take it very hard that I wasn't invited in the past. <laughs> um it's 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 an unbelievable group and uh, so this is according to them at the time the top 30 adventures of all time okay now we've had we had a whole legends of lore on this uh, about two years ago where we said i don't know about some of these but let's uh, and gary um eric mostly eric martin said it was a little political but you got you got ghost tower 30 Assassin's Not 29, Lost City, you know, and, and that's, this is only Leonard's only one in the top 30 is Assassin's Not. Now, I beg to differ. I think it's Bone Hill myself, but this was the first plot based adventure, right? Well, I think something that's important to remember, Jay, is a lot of the people that did this were designers. Yeah. And as a designer, I think you tend to look at things differently than as a player or a yeah. DM or something like that, because I can tell you, the way that the murder mystery component of that adventure of the Assassin's Knot is laid out is really, really well done. It's one of the few modules that is that that dares to take on such a dynamic atmosphere within a game. True. Um, so from a design perspective, I think Assassin's Knot is far better than Bone Hill. It's, it's certainly technically harder to pull off from a designer standpoint. Hard to and, and as a matter of fact, uh, I used I used a lot of the the uh, inspiration from uh from assassins not to make uh um who sits upon the oak and throne my own adventure cool. I, I, because I, I i thought it was so well done from the perspective of conveying the murder mystery okay fair enough and that's why i love your input on this uh you got you got lost city 28 salt march 27 now i'm gonna say this salt marsh is the first salt marsh is okay it's not I don't know. It's not like earth shattering to me. It's a setting based one. I, there's better first level adventures. Cult of the Reptile God's way better, right? You know, um, Hamlet's way better. But it's I don't know if it's twenty seventh, but okay, I'll, we'll, we'll be all right with that. City of Skulls twenty sixth. I told everyone on the other night when we had the discussion, this is the one adventure that scared me to run because I didn't know what it would do to my campaign. So you know, <laughs> that's a nasty, nasty adventure. Uh, they had to throw a Dragonlance one in there. So, Dragons of Despair 25. City of the Spider Queen, a Forgotten Realms publication. Uh, twenty. I don't know about. I, I don't know anything about this one. I didn't even realize that this was an adventure. I thought this was more of a setting-based one. But I guess it is an adventure. Uh, uh, adventure. Right? Thousand and 23. Too low. But we'll, we'll get there, Carlos. We'll get there. <laughs> 22 Shoketh. Too low. You and I both probably agree 100% on that. I'm not saying a word yet. I'm waiting. <laughs> Dark Tower 21. 
um, the only judges guild one on here, too low. The setting was Menzo Barrison. Okay, Lan. Okay, the cool deal. Scourge of the Slave Lords. I don't like them putting the compilations together. But then again, I do it myself coming up. So the A1 to 4 series probably deserves to be in the top 20. Reptile God 19. Tomoakon 18. It's a tough competition adventure. Ruins of Undermountain by Ed Greenwood. I think it's the only Ed Greenwood one on here. Right? Okay. I think it's only Ed Greenwood adventure on here. And that's 17. Uh, that's a good adventure. Isle of Dread 16. Retconned. We we saw talk about that last week on the here. Ret, yep. The whole thing got retconned in on a couple uh, on Dungeon 112. Right? Castle Amber. Hmm. Tom Moldvay. I don't know. 15th, Carlos? Higher. Way higher. You mean better than that? In the top? Better than that. Okay. In my opinion. But but I'm I'm reserving I'm reserving okay. comment. Dead gods. I never ran it. I didn't run I've never run a Planescape one, fourteenth. How did I try to get there? Get down that. <laughs> See, uh, p- 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 Dwellers of the Forbidden City. Uh, Zeb Cook Adventure. Um, someone said, was it Rich? Yes, uh, Michael. We got Carlos on. We, uh, hey, Rob, did we, did, um for a little bit, did, um, before he has to depart, did someone, I think it's Rich Diolia, Longitalis said he hated this because it just went on and on and on forever. Am I, re- am I remembering that correctly, everyone? I can't remember that discussion, but yeah. For- Forge of Fury, Richard Baker, third edition. Okay. Firestorm Peak, a very good adventure. Is Firestorm Peak better than Night Below, though? Not close. Okay. Not even close. Yeah, Night Below, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, another another Bruce Cordell, Return to the Turn of Horrors. I love a couple of the Return, return Adventures, but they don't make it into my top. But... Uh, is that better than the original? Well, um, we'll see there. No way, uh, Troy says. White Blue Mountain 9? I'm good with that. Ah! It burns my eyes. It burns us. <laughs> to, yeah. Turn, to, it's to turn, number 8. Return yeah. an 8th? Oh, my God. Well, at least the original is higher than the <laughs> return. So, yeah. Keep it in the Borderlands 7th. The I series. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't know. On the on that being 6th. Expedition of Barrier Peaks, if Gary Hulian's on, his eyes will pop out of his head. He thinks it's probably yep. too high. Temple Fourth should be higher. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that meeting where they were discussing it there and yeah. hear Gary's comments to the rest of the panel about mm-hmm. uh, about uh, Barrier Peaks. That would have been awesome. Yeah, they put in him on in the list as a hostage. Tumahar is <laughs> three. Ravenloft, two. Okay, this is not yep. a Greyhawk basic thing. And number one is, uh, and I, I hate that this is all together, and we're, I'm going to separate this out, Queen of the Spiders. I can't stand that. Because yeah. you okay. lose the Giant Series. You don't even realize the Giant Series is in there, right? Uh, you know, GDQ, it's just, it, it's, it's, Whoa. Yeah. it's a compilation. All right, so with that, Carlos, and you can uh, play along too. If, if, and okay. I know you're doing this on a short, short notice. And, and mine may, I'm going to put some caveats out here, please. This mine could change tomorrow. I thought about this for a couple of days, and I put together here is my top. T- no, here's my wall of fame. Here's my top twelve as it pertains to my Greyhawk campaign. Okay, of forty two years and momentous adventures. And you're going to call me a kiss ass and a suck up for some of these. All right. So here we go. Number twelve. I got them all ready to go here. Oh, I thought number twelve is Thursden. I, I, I now I rate. I love Thursden. It's a great adventure. I love the way Carlos says run this first instead of Showcanth, which makes it even better. But Showcanth is way higher rank. But Thar- Thursden, we're talking twelve. Twelve is pretty respectful in itself. Now I know you're all going to yell and you're all going to say, "Well, what this is what I I suggest that everyone in the community." We put a post fest, and we all do this top twelve, top twenty, and we see where everyone, where everything falls. All right, so that's my twelfth, Carlos. Bonus points for including Castle Entertainment modules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, I couldn't. I, for me to put, I, I should have put holes in there, but I, did, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It's fine. It's a little bit self-aggrandizing anyway, so I get it. Number eleventh is not is a published adventure in Dungeon. Okay. 
Number 11 is Citadel by the Sea. Okay? It's a wonderful, wonderful adventure. And I can't even imagine how many times and when we place this uh, uh, in the southern, southern Keel land, and it is a fantastic adventure. Um, and the, the Alcarg, the Elf Slayer, the Spear, I just, I just love it. It's the only one that's not in the regular publications. I put this at 11. All right. I know I went off the little path on this one, but I had to give it its props. A lot of these are low level adventures because that sets that sets the mindset for your players. And you're like, it's the, the, the initial adventures are the most memorable ones. You know, get out for the most part. Right, that's 11 for me. All right. Number Agreed. 10. Number 10. I had a lot of fun with this. Dark Tower is number 10 for me. A unbelievable adventure. Long uh, uh, Janelle Jackways did this and uh, just. Uh, just, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you know, you got to go all the way down to go all the way back up. And there's some really cool things. We, pl you know, we placed this in the Keelan Grand March border as well. Um, you know, like I said, you all may have, you know, say, Oh, I, I, I that's not a gray one, but remember, this is what I ran in my gray campaign. All right. That's number 10. Jay, I realize you haven't gotten to the top yet, but dark tower over Teagle Manor. Really? I, I never ran Teagle Manor in my campaign. Oh, okay. Never mind them. Good point. That's a good point. And Tim would probably put yep. Tim Tim would probably put these like if Tim was doing this, he may have Teagle Manor and Dark Tower both in his top five or six. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, T Tim ran Teagle Manor for me, but it wasn't in my Greyhawk campaign. So I, I can't. Sure. Yeah, it, it's a great point though, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Number nine, Return of the Eight, the only two uh, two E adventure. And uh, Carlos, you and I, this is funny, you came on tonight. We've talked about this a lot, how you have to make some changes to add in some new things. You got three, three brand new members. If you don't finish this adventure, what happens to your campaign? Tensor doesn't come back. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's radically different. And by the way, I think that's too low. Okay. I think that's one of the greatest adventures ever written. Okay. I, I respect that a whole, a whole mm -hmm. bit. It is on my wall of fame. Uh, maybe I should put this a little higher. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a it is a great adventure. And it's it's, got, there's there's tough competition at the top though, so I get why you didn't have that in, in, near the top for yourself. But for me, that one is that's that's tough to beat. It, it is. Um, it, it's a really good one, Roger Moore. You know, and we had him on. So uh, yeah, I, I am Gitano, uh, and that's the thing. And this next one, now you're going to say you're, you're you're breaking your own rule. Remember, I'm a kid. I didn't get the the G1, G2, G3 by themselves. I had a, I had this one. So this is the, against the Giants is number eight for me. All right, the Giants because I had the adventure this way. I never had them separate. When we bought them in 1980, it was in this or 81. It was in this grouping already. So against the Giants for me is number is number um, is number eight, and it's just. What a f it's a fantastic, and at the end, there's Drow at the end, and you get, and Clavra is at the end of this, and D3, and I mean, G3, and all sorts of tentacle rods in the end of this, you know, stuff that, uh, to this day, that uh, you see in a lot of other uh, things. What are your thoughts, uh, Anna and Carlos, on me, on the, me using G3 instead of G just G1 through 3 instead of G3 or something like that? Uh, I don't really necessarily, I can understand why you would do that. Um, I think, though, that if you were going to split them up, you would find that there's a couple of the modules in, in, in G1 through 3 that would make your top 5, and you may find another one that's down like 10. Um, by the way, I think that that's a top 5 module. Okay. Yeah, if you take it as a whole. If you take it as a whole. Well, you know, and um, I agree that it could be it could be a top 5 on another given day. It, 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 From a design it, standpoint, too. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's not everybody's favorite of the three, but from a design standpoint, boy, do I admire the hell out of G two. Um, glacial glacial rift. Yes. Just from a cartography standpoint alone, changed a lot of the game. And having that remoras in the middle. <laughs> to yeah, and exactly. Stuff. Oh my exactly. god. That that module that module is brutal. Yeah, it it's is. Brutal. Everything encased in ice, all those people, it mm -hmm. is really, you're absolutely correct in it being a, a brutal. Mm -hmm. I think they all have great merits. I mean, they do, they do. Yeah. But I, I just meant from, I, mm -hmm. I want to say that because I discussed earlier how sometimes I, I look at these things with two minds. One is just uh, 
enthusiast of Greyhawk and as a player and as a DM, but the other one, there's a part of me that looks at them as a game designer. And I think about how innovative they are or how they problem solve as far as being as, as creating an adventure. And I'm like, yeah, that one, there's a lot to admire about that. And, and for me, G2 is really uh, very, uh, it's very inspirational from that respect. Excellent. Number seven, Len, Secret of Bone Hill. Now, now, the reason I say that is I have taken, I don't know how many times I've used Skelters and Zombires in my in my game. <laughs> that alone, two, two unique monsters, uh, undead monsters that I've utilized over and over and over again from here. Uh, the mixed the mixed potions, finding them that are already pre-mixed, it, it just some genius stuff by Len. The Church of the Big Game, just some, and it's a sandbox. It's a whole, it's a setting area that you can adventure in. Yeah. So, you know, that's my thought of it over. L2 is really good. But if I had to choose between the two, I I love, I just love Bone Hill. I, I, I think it's just such a great entry level adventure. Even though it's just levels two to four, you can start out level one because there's a lot of things on the outskirts you can do. So. Any thoughts on that? I know Carly should level L2 for the plot, but that's okay. I mean. Um, I. I don't want to. I don't want to be too controversial, but Bone Hill wouldn't make my top twenty. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. Okay. Um, number six. Everyone's going to make the kiss ass. Uh, Expeditions to the ruins of Greyhawk. Okay. Now, I thought about this, and we ran this for an entire year right before we started streaming. In like 2016, 2017. The sto- I love the way you get bits and pieces of... Because I don't want to slog through that entire Castle Greyhawk and just kill things going in. I, I, I love the plot line in this. I love the subplots in this. I love the tie-ins that they did. I love how they got rid of... They tied up loose ends. I love that, for me, we took this adventure. And we ran two different adventuring groups at the same time. A high-level group. And then a low-level group that was doing side quests for the high-level group, all centered around this expedition to the ruins of Greyhawk, because you had the Rigby, you know, the Rigby issue where the Iusians, you know, defile his his corpse and just silly things going along that really don't have that much to do with the, um, you know, you had to get those those mushroom caps and it felt like it felt like a good old school, almost like a. Um, Almost like a World of Warcraft uh, thing with all side quests going on. Not the style of the game, but just how many different quests you could do. The whole Geomorphs plan works well with Dorn Four Chips. So, Carlos, you're, um, what, what are your thoughts on me placing this one that high? Well, um, I would never place this this high. Okay. Um, I agree with everything you said, but there's one component of it that bugs me. Okay. And that is, as with a lot of the dungeon uh, magazine adventure paths these modules and in particular and ruins of greyhawk makes a lot of assumptions that certain events will end in a a certain way to jump onto the next component of it right and i think everybody here that has run as a dm that's run games realizes that you you absolutely cannot if you if you hinge a module or an adventure on your assumption of what player characters will do or the result of their actions, you're barking up the wrong tree right away. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up railroading them because, and I think that this module ends up railroading uh, player characters in ways that I don't find satisfactory. Uh, however, everything you said besides that is absolutely true. I do love the way that they tied up a lot of the loose ends, particularly with Roblar. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that made Rob Kuntz smile at some level. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, he never was happy with the whole Robolaris trader idea too. So, I mean, um, but yeah, I think that the railroady nature of it. Now, in certain games, you have to railroad player characters, especially in campaign games, in order to keep the uh, the plot moving. I get that, but this is not. I meant com- a campaign game. I meant a convention game. Yep. But if, in in a, in a campaign setting like this, I think that that's um, that's kind of uh, a poor form. So. 
I agree that with that, there's a lot. There's some railroading going on in here. Out once you once like you have all the subplots, and then it comes like this. It gets in and in. Right. But you got to remember. I'm sorry if any of you were on. You know, I'm going to check first. Okay, it looks like you, Bill and Mr. Crafter is off. Tim's not on. My guys need that because their brains don't function. Like because <laughs> I, told, I totally get it. I, like I said, I mean, you you ask for my opinion. Yeah, no, it, no. I, it, I, and in, and in some contexts, I'm sure that that's 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 not a, a bug; it's a feature. Yeah. For some groups, but for me, as a designer and as okay. as a DM, I it, it it bothers me on a fundamental level. It is it, it it for me it makes it helped. I love the the, the storyline. I was like, wow, I would have written that this way, and I think that's maybe why I like it so much. Anna was. I saw what they were doing as I'm playing this and I'm going through this prepping and I'm like, this is a great idea. Wow. Look, this is a great idea. You got a Rennie subplot here, uh, you know, where, where it, uh, one of your characters can start dating this Rennie, the Rennie wife. And it caused all these problems in a river quarter. And I'm like, wow, little good sidebars like that. And that was kind of some of the things that I liked about it. So, okay. All right. Well, that is number six. Now we're going to get. Some I, I, can I, can yeah. I just cover one caveat? Yep. And and there's one thing in this adventure that that bugs me beyond anything is that <laughs> there is a tunnel from the land of I use all the way to uh -oh. <laughs> it, that's hundreds of miles under the deepest lake in the that is known for being the unknown depth depth yeah. doesn't anyone realize the impossibility in that why why Rotten, writing Rotten blushes at that <laughs> exactly meaning why don't say they teleported in or something like that meaning right. that just dumb adventure design someone had a hiccup and didn't realize in editing that they should have changed it it doesn't change anything in the story they're gonna have the story exactly the same way it was just mm -hmm. dumb idea now we have a tunnel i totally room. forgot about that i think yeah, it was so yeah, ridiculous it, it, i must have yeah it's, it's uh, i must have forgotten uh, I, yeah that's just stupid yeah. ridiculousness that that is and unfortunately it doesn't they don't need to change the story just introduce some magic or they travel there or whatever so so i don't understand why someone wrote that in and and that that's my so, only caveat otherwise there's so many cool things in this adventure i've used it as a source book over and over again and it's great i yeah. think one of them was an original dragon age fan because if you all know there's an entire under under dark that they're all over the place the passages in in that okay. in, in the original yeah. dragon i think that's what they were thinking that might be yeah and that, that this is an underdark route not just yeah. a, but they a, yeah. could have yeah. they could have had some some caves down there and then just left them and then hooked up on that one in a Agreed. future module or something so hey, yeah, that, that was my only pet peeves are great there's nothing wrong with that and it's great yeah. we're all discussing mm -hmm. this so everyone can see the yep. options here all right for five to go big ones Number five, keep on the borderlands. All right. I don't know how many times I ran this as a kid, <laughs> but we ran it and and we we uh, we ran it and we placed it in the shield lands on the borderlands with the bandit kingdoms before from the ashes in the night in nineteen eighty or you know real early and it just it left an imprint another entry level adventure. It's not a Greyhawk adventure to start, but, you know, it's uh, uh, Return to Keep on the Borderlands is Kendall Keep. But this one, I mean, it's a what a great, what a great start off to for your first adventure ever. I mean, I never ran In Search of the Unknown, but well, we ran to Keep. So very basic. Mm -hmm. Carla's thoughts on that? Uh, the part of me that needs dungeon ecology uh, makes me want to vomit when I see that the cover of that module. Right. But no, back then in the day, that wasn't even a thing so i don't i have no problem with that place it's a historically great module uh, it's been so inspirational for so many people it, it definitely deserves its place okay number four now we're getting into the, the nitty-gritty here and you're yep. gonna some of you're gonna go uh well uh you have two that are the same number four is hamlet so i don't have a number one uh it's an uh you know it's a first level it is the ultimate great sandbox mm -hmm. it is a fantastic fantastic adventure um, uh, and you can do so much from this. Now you're gonna say, "Why do I separate this out?" You'll see, because uh, I this remember when this came out. Oh, Temple's gonna be out soon, and what? Seven years later. Yeah, something like that. So it never. And I came think out. I went to my local hobby shop and asked the poor guy every single day for the seven years if he'd gotten it in yet. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and and so this is all we had, and we're like, wow. And I don't think. I, all right, maybe N1 
initial setting is as the town is as good as as Hamlet, but I don't think they ever penultimate surpassed it with any of those no. for for an original town setting with a backstory. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, with my a, friend. And it makes sense. It's good yeah. world building and stuff. The village makes sense. Has a lot of of good little intrigues and 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 wonderful little scenes yeah. and stuff. It's it's great. Yeah. Your last two picks are so good in my opinion that I was inspired to create uh, my takes on both of them, which are uh, the nine was uh, my my uh, mm-hmm. keep on the Borderlands and uh, on the road to Cavrick's Cove is a castle entertainment module that is. Uh, much like um, Village of Hamlet, which is set in uh, in Raddick. Carlos, and, uh, I, so many people use Caverick's Code as their starting place. I know. And A it lot. So, it is it's so awesome. frigging it's awesome. um, gratifying to hear that. I know that, I, I, to be honest with you, I am not that huge of, of a, a Hamlet fan. I, I'm not really that big of a fa- fan of this module. However, I know how many people are fans of it. And I thought that there was a, a void for modules like that. So I said, you know what, let's just see my take on it. And the fact that it has responded, people have responded to it so well is so gratifying to me. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Number three. It's a campaign setting in itself. Vault of the Drow. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, everything you need to know to run Dark Elves is in this book. Everything. Death Lances, Wands of Vista Globs, uh, you know, all of it is here. Calavdra, the fighting between the 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 Torm Tours and and the Noquars and the Il Sirves and all the and the Go Deeps. Uh it's all here. Um and uh there's a lot you know Joe Blocks written references to it, but uh this is your Bible for this is not Drizzt style Dark Elves. These are the original I wear use a buckler and a weapon, Dark Elves, right? And that's you should uh, read this first, and then you can take yes. other stuff. But you should read this first, so you get the Greyhawk taste of, of Dark yeah. Elves first. Yeah, for sure. Or yeah. Drow. Yeah, number three. Okay, Carl, you should probably know what the final two are because uh, number. I, two. I have a, I have a strong suspicion. Number two, Lost Caverns of Shokanth. Oh, okay. Go. Now I know this is Carlos is number one, or close to it, you know. But Shokanth to me. When I, I was, this was the most anticipation I had when I got an adventure. I could not wait to run this. Road. I, I was so excited. And a lot of people go, well, what? Those monsters don't make any sense. They're guardians. So they're, they're kind of unnaturally set there to protect against the multiple entrances, you know, where, where, um, Drelzna is, is, is set to. So, and plus it's got a whole outdoor setting and a supplement book. So, Carlos, your thoughts. Uh, I think I've talked about this one ad nauseum to people, yep. but I, I, I will repeat what I always say, which is I still very vividly remember being a 12 year old boy sitting on my stomach in my living room in front of our fireplace, cracking open the plasticine to open this thing and having my little mind blown away uh, with the, the supplement book and all the different uh, demon. I mean, thing has friggin' new demon lords in it, mm-hmm. new, uh, new magic items, all these cool encounters. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was just that book revolutionized the way that I I played the game, literally. I mean, the way I looked at the game. So I can't I can't put it as anything less than number one for me. Yeah, there's part of me as a designer now that and you touched on it a bit about ecology. But again, you said like you said, they're guardian creatures. Um, there's little things on it that I think I wish that I if I were if, if you said, Carlos, write this module, I might have handled them a little bit differently. In the context that this was released in, and um, with everything that that was done with it, uh, yeah, it's my number one, pretty and, solidly too. And yep. the only reason the other, the next one's in my number one campaign uh, in campaign listing is because you all have bashed me so hard, and everyone knows my number one of all time is Return to the Temple of Elemental Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not. So we go. It's Temple of Elemental Evil. Now mm-hmm. you say, "Well, Hamlet's in there," but I'm talking the Temple of Elemental Evil part, everyone. Now, yeah, and a lot of people go, "Well, the notes suck." Well, I know the notes suck. I don't care. Mm-hmm. The storyline. My first generation of characters, because this is what we did when I read that when I read that cosmography, and uh, the Battle of Emerald Meadows, our characters were there as, like at 16, 17 year olds. Mm-hmm. We participated in that, <laughs> and that yeah. set the whole campaign up. 
And then you go back here years later to the original temple that that, that fight was all about. And it was just so momentous. And I waited seven freaking years for this thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's unquestionably Greyhawk. It's unquestionably as, as Greyhawk. well. That, I mean, it's, it's set in Greyhawk from from yeah. the get go, and that's something I love. Both Hamlet and and the Moat House and the Temple. It's set in Greyhawk from from original yeah. written. He's not shoehorned in afterward like so many of the other modules. It's a Greyhawk modules from right. from day one, and that's something I, I really love about this. And, and, and that's why I love it so much. That's why I can't stand that return. I mean, I don't need the return here. It's done. Right, mm -hmm. it's part of the campaign. Uh, so, Carlos, but that you... doesn't mean that you in your home game could go back to the temple many times. Right, for absolutely. Many different reasons, yes, absolutely. At, for yep. other adventures and other reasons, mm -hmm. after an epilogue yep. or something going on, mm -hmm. we've had that happen. We've had a mm -hmm. resurgence of uh, uh, like we had an Earth Elementalist try and restart the temple in an adventure, uh, not like five years ago, uh, and, and yep. they went back and you know. So there were, we all, you know, always have that. So, Carlos, your thoughts. As I find my, well, it's all the way back when I, here. When I was like uh, 22 years old, I remember I took a girl that I was dating at Bowling Green out to dinner. And uh, we went to a steakhouse. And um, she, I asked, she's looking down at the, the menu. And uh, she says, uh, she says, what's good here? And I said, well, you know, I'm looking up and down at the menu. I said, I've heard that the, the, the chef makes a good filet mignon. Why don't you have that? And she looked at me. And she's like, I can't stand filling any on. <laughs> and I looked at her like she'd grown another head. Well, that's probably the look you're going to give me when I tell you this is actually in my bottom 20 of all time. Okay, that's no problem. Yeah, it is, um, you know, much in the way that that horses are, are for courses. Um, you know, I think that some people, you know, some people love things that other people hate and vice mm -hmm. versa. This is this is my bet noir. I really don't. I, I've never been a fan of this module. Got it. I thought it was a massive letdown after the the amount of time that we waited for it. Um, it's very obviously kit bashed together. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And as you mentioned, the nodes. I can't stand the nodes. As, as soon as care. you go down you, into the temple, the the magic disappears. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's too big of a part of the module for me not to you know not to address at least with my 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 feelings about it, but. I have no problem with people who like it. I mean, I get it. I, I understand why people do like it. But you also have to remember, since I don't really like Hamlet that much either. Right. It's kind of like it really doesn't have even that to pull me into it. So, yeah, I'm not a huge TE fan. But mm -hmm. by that's by that by that being said, though, um, again, the historical cachet that it carries for it with it is undeniable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it's been such a huge part of people's experience with the game, especially Greyhawk. I can't totally dismiss it. Well, but for me personally, as a yeah. designer and as a player and as a DM, I have no room for that module. I, but yeah, uh, so, yeah we we'll say I, I, I agree with you, uh, uh, Carlos. And the reason I like it so much is because I don't play it. I, yeah. I like it for the historical. I like it for the mm -hmm. overview. I like yeah. it for, sure. for placing sure. it there so I can do whatever I want with it, meaning anything that is below two levels of, of the entry of the, the the temple. I read through it and threw it away and ignored it, so to speak. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. I can't. Yeah. I, I, I don't have space for that. One. I, I ignore the yeah. nodes. Just note mm -hmm. that the nodes. The, the, the totally elemental ignored. part, I skipped that part. Yep. <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? Exactly. I, I just crazy? threw out everything elementally, but yep. I just threw that out. So Jay, speak, I've got to go right now. Carlos, I thanks. Do wanna, I do want to oh, thank you. two modules that I think are uh, Please. egregious um, mm -hmm. uh, omissions for, from you. Go ahead. The first being, I cannot believe that Morgan Cannon's Fantastic Adventure slash Mauer Castle isn't up there somewhere. Yeah. I can't believe that. That I, is you... such an amazing module and what Rob did with that in subsequent Dungeon Magazine issues is even just makes it even better. I, I so that I one, never that one ran for it. Me is, I never ran That it. one for me is way, way okay. up there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the other one is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pretend that the only reason this isn't up there is because you couldn't fit an entire box set behind one of those frames, and that's Night Below. Night right. Below. If you like, if you oh like, yeah, Night um, Below. Yeah. It's if you're one. like in uh, the 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 D three vibe, the whole flavor of D three, then you've got to Night Below's got to be there for you. It's got to be. I didn't run either of them for okay, my, my campaign, that's and, and that's those, those that's the reason. Are, 
to yeah. me, probably so, two of the more egregious yeah. omissions from there. Please note this is specific to my campaign and what happened in 42 years of my campaign with my plan. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where I want to make the caveat for that. I take I, that back. There is one other final module that is should be up there, and that is the Witch Queen's Lament, which is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, Carlos, <laughs> thanks, man. That was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate oh, that right. was great. I'm, I'm so off. happy you yep. dropped in there. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yep. See you, Thank everybody. You. Have a good, have yep. a good one. All right, talk to you soon. Bye, bye. That was really nice. So, yeah. please mm -hmm. note your your list may be completely different than mine. And I I thought about on my wall of fame, like uh, Citadel by Sea is not on this because it's on the Dungeons uh, uh, published uh, uh, magazine side. I thought of Ravager of Time on there. I thought of but Tomb of Lizard King, uh, you know, even Fortress Elendar, and and you can see some of the other ones on there. But I I I thought about it for a couple of days and came up with that list. It may change, it may change down the road. But just know, hopefully, that's it will change. But <clears throat> there will be new cool things written and stuff yep. that you will add in and and so on. So yeah. absolutely. But I just wanted to share that with everyone and note that the, yeah. the top thirty is a subject to a discussion point, which we did on a whole nother adventure. A whole other uh, show, and note there's some great adventures on there, and I don't want to bash anything except for Return because you know how I feel about Vampire Thrommel. But uh, uh, but uh, you know, but other than that, you know, there's just some wonderful, wonderful. Uh, no work should be, you know, we got a couple out there that I, you know, Doom Grinder and stuff that uh, you know, part of many jokes, but yeah, we got to respect everyone's works, and mm -hmm. that's what's so great about about number uh, about this dungeon that they did this that they even yeah hey darling they even dared they dared do this, this right yeah so um please let me know your thoughts i know yeah no puppets oh my god i um uh, you know i just wanted to share with you what i did uh, during this uh, uh you know uh, as a thought and um it was really nice to carlo to come do you run keep on the board uh, yes i put in the shield lands it was in the Shieldlands up near White Plume on the border between the Shieldlands and the Bandit Kingdoms early days when there were, the Bandit Kings were raiding in the Shieldlands all the time, and that's where I put it. So, so Rich, I see you on. Rich, were you frustrated with the Lost City? Was that you? Did you tell me that? Did that, that drove you a little crazy? It was an adventure you said you couldn't stand. I don't know if it was that one or another one. Yes, okay, that's what I said, because that was in the 30 of all time. I thought it was you. You said you really couldn't stand the adventure. And that's what he means. An adventure in the top 30, look, Rich, for one, didn't like it. So please let me always know your thoughts. Uh, put your, you know, um, feel free to uh, elaborate on this. And as I said, put it in cannon fire, make a post up and say, here's mine. Here's my top mm -hmm. 10. Here's my top three, whatever. You know, because we just, discussion's always a good thing um, yep. here. So, all right. So we'll, go, we'll talk about some adventures here. Where are we at? Yeah. Okay. So we have the Twisted the King. The Twisted King, I think, is uh, Palace of the Twisted King. I don't think this is Greyhawk. Uh, cool <laughs> uh, illustrations, but yeah. This is not Greyhawk. It doesn't mention it in the background. So, this yeah. could be Sea of Dust. I was just going to say, it looks kind of like yeah, a deserted uh, yeah. wilderness, uh, deserty kind of, yeah. Yep. So... And you can have, like I said, there's a lot of adventures that like Tim would do differently than me. He'd do Hall, uh, Bale Door and a couple of those Halls of Teas and Thane Tim would pick. He'd pick yeah. a lot, some from the White Dwarf, you know. So, but it's it just, it's what you grow up with and what you use. You never run a produced module, otherwise. You've never run a produced module ever. Wow. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. One, yeah. Wondering endlessly, you, you, you're in my camp. <laughs> I read them, but I don't run them. Yeah. When you're running it, so when you're when you're young, when you're a kid, and you're running, and you're you know in 1980, uh, and it's a Greyhawk adventure. Oh, yeah. You have to run it, right? You have to do it. You want? No, I Greyhawk. never, yeah. never got the, the but, but, except for Hamlet. I ran it out of, um, yeah, I read through and and ran it, and then the moat house and the first bit of the temple, and then I skipped the rest and in, in improvised. I forgot okay. to tell Carlos that the last three week three adventures was all a prelude for his one with uh, Slippery Sly Keta, Slippery Keta. Uh, well, dun, dun, dun. all right, Sonic's adventure. Okay. Not Greyhawk. Uh, they, but they had a. I think they had a third edition Psionics coming out book yep. or something. So they probably did something Some to support Githy it. Some Githyanki, the Death of Lashmere. Yep. Not Greyhawk at all. But hey, you can you can possibly place this. Yeah, and another one that, that with a little tweaking will be not be a problem to place. I have a cute little frog in there. There's yep. some cool weapons. Yep, Psy psychic warrior eight elocator female Githyanki. So yep, 
Notes, you're going against Githyanki, what could go wrong? Uh, yeah. You ran this one a few weeks ago? Wrong. You ran this one, Rich, really? Oh, cool. Interesting. Neat. Oh, did it go well? So, they were brutal. Oh, Dale played that. Asylum, here we go. Uh, is this the last one? This concludes the Shackled City Adventure Path. 19th, four yep. 19th level characters. Chris Perkins to again. 20. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. So It's cool, though. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Where'd you place it, Rich? Was it placed in Greyhawk? I'm assuming, but you had to go to other planes. Some looks like Planescape. Yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? It has a Planescape feel to it. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yep. It does really look Planescape-y. So, uh, yeah, all these uh, crazies here. Spawn of Madness. So, it goes back to a lot of uh, places in the Olman Islands. Okay, there you go. Lashmere. Okay. Yep. That's, yeah. I understand. Not uh, this is the last of the cauldrons. This is, so they had eleven adventures in there. It's an odd number, but they went with eleven. So new weapon quality, dementia. Hmm. Uh, hit by successfully creature critically hit. Uh, a confusion. Uh, uh, it'll do a confusion effect. That's cool. Skull rot. So um, high level. This will finish up your uh, not placed in Greyhawk yet Greyhawk adventure series, mm -hmm. Shackled City. With super high level, um, you know, adventuring here. Uh, now, what I like about this, once again, and they did this the last time. That guy, that look at looks, look at that side. Yeah, yeah he doesn't mm -hmm. look happy. So you got some super high level adventuring in this one, and we come to, and that's the continuing. Uh, where are the pictures? There's some good pictures in here, but I thought... Here it is. I love this. So they give you all the PCs, uh, NPCs here, the faces of Cauldron, more of them from this, yep. which I think is a fantastic thing to do. This is the before the areas, uh, the area of you know, having a lot of pictures for all of them, but it gives you a lot of key ones here in that, and then with a key on, on, on where who they are. And then we, you know, which is cool. All right, so we did the 30 greatest. I missed something, though. I want to talk about okay. this. Yeah. Right here. All right. Here are the recommended dungeon adventures. Now, I gave you one. I gave you one from Dragon Magazine, right? I gave you Citadel by the Sea. Now, but I want to talk about a couple of these. Kingdom of the Ghouls by Wolfgang Bauer is an entire, you know, he has his 5e book, Empire of the Ghouls now, which mm -hmm. is based on this adventure, which I ran. Um, here's the Eye of Merkel, which is the last one. We talked about this weeks ago. In the Mirror of Dead Men series that I renamed Eye of Narol by our friend and, and fellow gamer, Eric Boyd, number 73. So I ran that. Into the Fire, this is the one with Flame, the very first adventure with the Red Dragon Flame on it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I ran that. Um, so I, uh, Mud Sorcerer's Tomb. That is an homage. It is one of the most difficult adventures I've ever DM'd uh, and the players had. That's an homage to Tomb of Horrors. Okay, and by Mike Shelton, 37. That is a nasty, nasty adventure and a good one, too, to be number one. I think Kingdom of the Ghouls may be number one, uh, uh, but there's a lot of them I like on this list, too. So here's a recommendation for your top 10 dungeon adventures um, yep. up to that point. So it is madness, isn't it, Brawl? Yeah. Yep. So it, you put Gary through that, man, because you got to go underwater and stuff to get to it's an It's a tough adventure. Yeah. Definitely some good stuff there. Uh, and Jeff, that makes sense. That makes sense. I do have a little bone, Rich, because um, there we found a reference uh, for our... Um, it's a minor thing, though. Uh, and, um, where uh, Anna and I placed... Uh, um, wait, why isn't that shrinking? It should shrink. There we go. Uh, in uh, the uh, Greyhawk adventure setting thing, there's actual reference in the... Um, Forgotten Temple of Arithnal that I found that says, oh, the, the, one of the captives oh. in there, remember, Anna, we found it said, he was mm -hmm. captured in the source right where this near is nearby. So, yes, you got to move it from Dreadwood to the source at some point there. Yep. So, all right, we already talked about the 30 here. 
uh, and we had a nice discussion on this. And there's your Lost City, Rich, and there's a whole bunch of really great adventures here. You know, some we can always argue about placement. Um, you know, Ed's only got one adventure here. I think that's a little bit of a shame. Yeah, um, he should definitely have more, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too. And I think, like I said... Uh, but know... he's written a lot of other stuff more than adventures, in yeah. a way. He's written source books and novels and stuff like that more than straight adventures, right. I think. That's my guess. Yeah. And I love Ravenloft. I mean, like I said, I ran Ravenloft and Greyhawk. I love Ravenloft and Ravenloft, too. They're on my wall of fame, but... It yeah, be I, I can totally well. understand. I, I, not for me, but most yeah. of these things, but I can totally get it why Raven Luff should be really up there. It was very innovative. It was a different, it took a different twist on the D&D game concept. And and it was a lot of uh, really high production values and, and isometric maps and stuff like that. So it's it's a great adventure for many, many reasons. So, and then part three for Mastering the Game from Monty Cook. Yep. You know, and uh, and uh, so he does a lot of uh, discussion here. And like I said, they have a whole yep. series on this where they get other people to give uh, a lot of um, ideas for campaigning, and, mm -hmm. and, which is neat. And, like that, here, we got yeah, inform yeah. informants. So you got exactly. I, I was yeah. going to say I read them when they came out, but they were worth reading again. So they're kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. Abandoned buildings and other yeah. So just some general cool ideas yeah. at the end of this uh, of this era. <laughs> Of dungeons that can really uh, yeah. just provoke thought refugees by mike merles yeah, yeah. thought-provoking stuff mm -hmm. which is cool yeah so uh and we get through yep we get through these and we're going to go on to the next one and we just close out the previous one and then we're going to go to all right we got two to go here let's go to 117 yeah so like i said it was really kind of carlos to hop on it was completely um unbeknownst that he was going to do that so yeah um, what, whoops, I had it open before. Let me go all the way to the beginning here. 117. All right. This is, is it controversial? I don't know. But this assumes that you lose in the G series or the, or the Queen of Spiders series. I don't know where, uh, I, and this is a placement setting for, um, Living Greyhawk, and this is Sturridge. Remember, Sturridge was was a was a core, right? Sturridge was not part of anyone's region, if I correct. I think so, but I yeah. might be wrong on that one. But yeah, I don't think it was. I, I think it was core. Yeah. So Isvin, which is the capital, Sturridge. I city think it was Shatter. because it was supposed to be Drow and stuff there. Or as my well, that's guess. it. So what what this is, yeah. Anna, is this assumes that the G wherever you go, the Queen of Spiders or the G series or whatever, that mm -hmm. you lose. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, core. You're a Lord of Starch. Awesome. So that's what the, the assumption is on this, that bad guys yep. win in this and kind of, which will okay. undo your campaign pretty quick if you ran a G series, which, so. Yeah. All right. So here you go. It's been City of Shadows. Greg Vaughn and Eric Marna do a really cool write-up on this. And uh, and the campaign component is by Eric. Um yeah. So, uh, and then they're going to talk. He's going to talk about some other stuff that's coming up. So we'll see that in the next couple of weeks. And next month, the the maps start. The yes, the, the maps start. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Next month. That, so that was that was really cool. We got a little preview. Foreshadowing on that. So this is uh, this is Ebron Sharn. So this is Keith Baker. Yep. We'll move on from that. That is a complete Ebron adventure. Okay. All right. Yep. All Ebron here. All right. Here we go. Estvin City of Shadows. Hey, Rad. Good to see you. Yes, and that's a good thing. Death. Um, get get Hello. you some ideas out here. Greg Vaughn, Eric yeah. Mona. Uh, gives you the setting. This is as of the Living Greyhawk era. Okay. Yep. So, and uh, it talks about uh, you know the background and the history of it here and it says with loth match uh, you know um so it says uh you know the the raids happened and uh you know uh hey so it, it appears that it says here that you go in and you do the, the queen of spiders gdq and you're successful and then more come, I think. Is that is that how I have it? Yeah, I'm almost positive. And that and that they get overrun a second time. Okay, all right, no problem. Oh, is he? Wow, he's still supporting his through online sales. That's cool. 
So Anna, this map here's a storage map. Uh, I, I'm assuming, yeah. yeah, that's all updated. I've, I've read it, so yeah, yeah, yeah and, and it should be uh, yeah. Yep. So um, and they give you some back, a lot of background on the town. Uh, you know, uh, deities, the gods here. So they give you some some good points if you want to start. Uh, you know, all these are written up, and, and it's it's appreciated. Once again, living Greyhawk material getting put in dungeon. Um, you know, and Dungeon Magazine is good, and you got a map uh, um, done, and you'll there's a this one's kind of fuzzy, but uh, the next step um, issue it's a little bit better on my thing. So, yep, all done up. So you have if you want to start a city base, and you could make this a city base, but then not have them overrun. I, you can do whatever you want with it, and that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I also like in third edition, they had a lot of, of, of cool, you had stat blocks for cities and stuff, and they developed that even further in, in uh, Pathfinder. So anyone who wants to, to, to make settlements and stuff play a big part that way, I can recommend Ultimate Campaign uh, from Pathfinder 1 that builds on the third edition era on how settlements and stuff. And it's, it, I, I really, that, that's really cool. So that was, I think, a great addition to the game. So here's Fresho Sigil, and he's one of the... Hey, Blue Box! Good Hello. to see you. Hopefully you had a nice, uh, you had a nice uh, adventure there today. Um, cranking it up there. Really appreciate that. Um, I know uh, I know it's uh, Greyhawk. I hear great things about your star maps there, Rory, which is awesome. Fresho Sigil. Isn't Fresho Sigil one of the ones from the G Giant series? I'm almost positive he is. He's one of those because yeah. fucking Heidi Peak was one. Yeah, I'm almost positive he was one of the ones. Russia, I'm sure they the <laughs> they looked at all the the previous when they did wrote this. So so yeah. Yeah, good to see you, Mystical. We 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 just had Carlos Slicing on. And we did uh, the top thirty of all time, and I talked about my top twelve per pertaining to my campaign. It was a fun discussion, and uh, yeah, um, Rory has them. Uh, and he's worked on some stuff uh, in his Greyhawk uh, um, blue box every other week, and uh, that the group that just raided into us. Um, yeah, Mac. It's not. Um, it's a work in progress. It's pretty. Some pretty neat stuff. So um, mm -hmm. I know that would get you, get you going there. They kind of had, uh, you know, power things similar to what Dragonlance has with phases of the moon. So off of this Isfin is this adventure by Greg Vaughn, Touch of the Abyss. So, uh, which is based on City of Shadows. So you have an adventure to run with this. Um, did anyone run this? Anyone run this one in chat out here? Good to see you. Cardman, uh, you you did win last night. I need to get you the PDF from uh, um, the PDF of um, Shentufi. Um, so just note that it will be coming to you. I'll be away for three days, but I'll make sure it gets to you by email. Um, they may have a, a login or connection. So, so um, and it talks about uh, the Living Girl Cassette here provides useful information in this region, but not necessarily for play. So there you go. Eleventh level characters on this one, so this is not a um, not something that is uh, uh, entry level. But that's neat that you have an adventure, um, you know, uh, which pertains right to the city they gave you. So not only are they giving you the city setting in Sterich, they're giving you a whole adventure hook and series of event, uh, you know, uh, with uh, re ways to get into it. And I think that's really great. I don't know if this was to pull more people in the living Greyhawk or or just because of Eric Mona's love of Greyhawk. I think it, more the second one. It's Eric... Probably a little bit of both is my guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah. Ruga. Yeah. Because and, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of, of Greyhawk love from Eric Mona and, and, yeah. and, and, and Greg Vaughn and stuff that did this. So, we haven't had so Greg Vaughn on yet. Part. We should probably get him on. Adam. Yeah, we should try and get him on. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna work on that one too. Uh. So yeah. And the adventure continues on. I've not. I've never run this. If anyone has, let me know and just uh, give me your experiences on this. Some good maps here. I mean, very nicely yeah. done maps. Crawl and keep. But you have. Like it's less said, already. They're, I've they're always good. <laughs> one adventure in all four of these, and that's coming up in the next one. And it's high level. Yep, uh, that guy doesn't look like he's. He looks like he's. He not looks a like he's a bit possessed. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, interrogation table. So, 
Yeah, neat. Uh, as you can see, you got a lot of uh, these, uh, look, Bard, Fighter, Sorcerer, the Mad Marquis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, journal handouts. So, it's neat stuff. It appears, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, you find, I guess the marquee was changed out on that one. Greg Vaughn is the author of Tamara's Fate, which is in Ghost of Saltmarsh and Torrents of Dread. Yeah, I ran both of them. So, I like Greg Vaughn's stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Winding Way, any setting. This is uh, almost, I don't know what that is. It looks like a, a, a dragon or, yep. So, this is not Greyhawk base at all. It's not. It's an open an open setting one. Um. I'm trying to see Dark Moon Mountains. That sounds that sounds Forgotten Realms. It does. It said any setting, but it it feels fr to me. I'm just looking to see if I, I I'm scrolling through this to see if there's any deities mentioned. I don't see any. So, Peak Pizzle Hawk. That's exactly exactly. Yeah. That's what's so good mm -hmm. about it. Yep. Prince Gorgeous. Okay. Time is good. Yeah, I don't see any specific notations of deities. Well, Shrine of Narol. There we go. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay, we we couldn't write it off then. <laughs> we can't write it off. Yeah, yeah. Shrine of Narol right here. There it is. There we go. Mm -hmm. Huh. Now we now we need to take it seriously. <laughs> what is what is it? Blood Fiend Locust? So um I must say I like it like it more and more. The more I see it, this, I like it. <laughs> What's up, Will? Miss Carlos being on, talking about uh, some great adventures there. Um, hopefully you're doing well, and thanks for coming on a, a while ago. Oh, that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Minor Artifact Manual of the Winding Way. So, I, well, there's a Narol reference in here, but I don't see anything that uh, note, notates anywhere in gray, a Greyhawk setting that I see. Did not see it. Now I need to, to I need to take a screenshot yep. of that blood fiend locust that, and see if I can find some more stats for it somewhere. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you very much for yep. the follow. Mm -hmm. We're on it. We're, we're we're on that grind to ten thousand. We've already we're approaching ninety four hundred. We're um we're on our way. Mike Merle's five second NPCs. So we got a little more of, of fun things at the end here. Just yep. how, uh, popping them up and giving some background here. It's it's cool. It's cool tables. It's cool tables just if you need something uh, yep. real quick. Mm -hmm. Graveyard encounters, that's neat. Always some good uh, things in the back of these dungeons in this era. A brief yep. respite. What you do when you're resting. Just hanging out. So, some ideas of sanctuary. It's cool too. Bridging the gap, Mike Merles. Stuff that you may not think about in your game, but just adds depth and flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <coughs> and hey, Will John. Wheaton, Will Wheaton wrote that, wrote that first level sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, this is where, this is where Eric got Will Wheaton involved. And uh, yeah. his connection was long gone. So I, I've tried, I've yeah. tried to get him mm -hmm. Will Wheaton to play in the game. And it's just, not, yeah, it, but it, it, it was, it was kind of funny. First level sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't agree with that. But then again, no, me neither. It's, it's, yeah. I invented zero level because I wanted more of first level entering, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, but not invented it, but I made my own version of it because it is actually Christmas in Greyhawk Island. Adventures. It's zero level play, is is there too? So um, we'll just leave that up for the time being. It, it, yeah, it sucks. And find let's go to one eighteen. One eighteen, chock full of Greyhawk. Okay. Right. Yeah, we have in half an hour. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. With shout outs, we, yeah, we're probably 20 oh, minutes ago. Starts out with some good illustration. Yeah. Now, here's the maps. thing the, the Lazaretti map. Now, they're buried down mm -hmm. here in my, this pile right here. But Hang on a second. I'll, I'll find them. Yeah, there's four parts of this map. So, if you have yep. unopened. I have them sitting around here somewhere. 118, 19, 20, 21, you're going to get, you can get a new a Greyhawk map. Uh, if you can't get a copy of the Darlene map, you can get this Lazaretti map. Now you can also, I still think they're still available on Paizo. I still think oh yeah, I think yeah, I think you can still get them. So so Troy is trying to get John who who pickpocketed Tim before to, to in on the Timney Enchanter. 
um, trying to uh, get rid of it, get rid of him. So more Will Wheaton. Look, so Will Wheaton's doing columns at this point. While Anna is doing that, I want to share something. That's this. This is this is from Eric Mona. It's called "It's Too Young for Nostalgia." Oh, okay. All right. Ooh, okay. Okay. This is this is his uh, letter from the editor, and this one. So now he talks about this. <laughs> he probably wishes this. I'll be thirty in a couple months. Right, and then uh, yes, in 1983, that curiosity brought the seven-year-old to Gary Gygax's world of Greyhawk. So he's talking about you know when he's seven and 83. I'm 16, so now I know I'm nine years older than him. Um, and he's talking about um how he doesn't have the same nostalgia as myself or others um of of the original days because um you know, uh, uh, that age, uh, that age gap. And, and that's okay. Um, and he talks about all that, you know, I probably can't, uh, let's see, all of us come through thousands of pages of public material. Finally, we exhausted our libraries and patiently waiting for a map to come out. And so this map, this is pre Anna, right? This is pre Anna doing her maps up with the Lazaretti maps. It's, Anna, it's actually, I, I'd started here, here. I found them Okay. here, here they are. Yeah. So, so they're, they're kind of, yeah. Yeah, each of them are are the size of of eight uh, letter size, right? Eight, eight and a half. So so, so it's in quarters, yeah. not halves. Exactly, there's right. quarter, and each quarter is eight pages big, so to speak. So that's yeah. what they talked about. In the... Yeah, yeah. So so I think these were these were actually this 2005. So I was pretty much. Uh, one quarter in my gaming because the, the reason I started was that back in 95, 96, something like that, TSR had a, 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 a listing in its catalog that said the, 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 the Greyhawk Atlas is mm -hmm. coming out, the Atlas of Greyhawk or Atlas of the Flannies. I forgot which one it was said. I think it was Atlas of the Flannies. And and I was like, yes, it's coming and it's coming and it's coming. And then it didn't come. It was one of the product that was announced and then forgotten. And I was like, I was devastated. That's why I started to do my own. Otherwise, I would have not done it, I think, or at least not done it until later. But from when we had Eric on, this was the embryo that was something they were aiming for. And then it disappeared. And it took until Paiso put it together and Rob Lazaretti did these maps that I think are excellent. So so one third, I, I was probably about one quarter through my, my Greyhawk project. I've done the core areas around near Div and stuff when these came out. And I sat down and <clears throat> redid the whole bunch of it and, and and I can tweak it up. But this is basically Darlene map redone in so a good, new so. style with added all most of the locations from all the published products, the past 20 some years were actually added to this one so these maps are excellent mm -hmm. and that is um it's a good if you don't have access to darlene maps you can still get them from yep. pizer's site i mean go for it mm -hmm. you know it's there, there's nothing wrong with them um so all right we got a couple of ventures in here box of flump now <laughs> yeah well, they said to someone, we want an adventure that has flump in it because it's the <laughs> dumbest uh, monster of all time. Yeah, but it, it has more charm than any other monster. Right, exactly. And that's it's, what they... it's such a charmy. It's useless, but it's it's such a charm. Yeah. So um, uh, and it's generically placed. Yeah, one of the best uh, best things I ever saw at Gen Con. No, it was at PaisoCon. Someone had made knitted flump hats, and 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 I, he had a flump hat that he had knitted himself, and and that was a flump you had on your head. That was one of the best things I've I've, I've seen. It was fantastic. So uh, I agree with Troy. Modrons are way dumber. A two by four. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I agree. 100%. Yeah, he kind of kind of goes without saying yeah. two by four monster. Yeah, still squall. So, all right, we're gonna you know um, the sand crab. Well, so it's just water based adventure, um, not yeah. placed well, in Greyhawk. 
but we have a, now we know that flumps have genders and they can have levels. We have a Ulam Pop male flump sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, right here. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of awesome. Yep. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, the Angelina. So, was anyone thinking about Angelina Jolie at this time in 2005? That's where they named this, the ship the Angelina. I think she from. did. Wasn't that the Tomb Raider era? Yeah, I'm not that's sure. My guess is that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is... Maybe Tomb Raider was earlier. I forgot, but yeah. It hurt. It hurts. It burns us. Yeah, just like just like this adventure burns me, Troy. That and Doom Grinder burn me. So then, and then we have, yeah, after so, that, that was, that's some nice good ship. illustrations. Yeah, some good illustrations for ships. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. very basic but usable. Oh yeah, very usable. Yeah, yeah. especially if you're doing VTTs, you can blow it. You mm -hmm. use this right here. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. This is the early days when Photoshop really took took shape, so to speak, and became really useful. So yeah, oh, yeah. That's just maybe we have a flump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. And we got the, this crazy, this crazy Mount Zogon thing again. I mean, phew. yeah, it's one of these that have been uh, a recurring <laughs> thingy. Yeah. And here we have another Greg Vaughn. So this is an addition. This is another one that goes with this fin. Shit, City of oh, Shadows. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, ah, okay. Yeah, he's done a series. There's a couple of them. And this yeah. is the last one. Uh, it doesn't. You don't scream in pain when you touched it. I because I'm immune now. I've I've built up. It's, it's like building up an immunity to iocane powder. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can touch or whatever. It so now yep. you know at the, yep. the beginning I couldn't. So you can you can look at it and stuff. Not read it yet, <laughs> I guess, but you can look at it. Yeah. Do you think this? This guy's on a very good guard if this if this creature snuck up on him, right? He's about to get no, his head crushed. No, he's not that that good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and and especially wearing a weapon that should sound like a, an anchor <laughs> being raised from a cruising ship or something. If you don't hear that, then then I oh, don't know what. Yeah. They're allies. Yeah, probably this is an it's, it's an arc. Hey, look at that flump! Is we got one of our wonderful wonderful uh, UKers out on here, Avon. So. Um, Oh, which welcome. Uh, which is um oh my god, my brain just shut off. Not Paul. Scary. <laughs> I get them all confused. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. All right. Um, my brain is. Uh, you you touched it, but you averted. It. I do. I averted my eyes. All right. So um, App. this is. Uh, this is not necessarily play Shadow of the Abyss, but Touch of the Abyss, uh, you know, is the first one. It's good to see you all. Um, and we have... Um, a map of Istvin that I... Oh, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah. I'm going ahead of things. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you, you have another... It's probably another... It, it's a yeah, better... Go. It's clearer than the, the one in the previous one. Yeah, but <laughs> this one looks way too small. This doesn't look like a, a, a city of 10, 15, 20, 30,000 or something. It's, it's... Come on, this doesn't look like a capital city with thousands of people living in it to be honest okay so it's too way too small is what you're saying yeah I, but that, that's i i can understand it they had the budget they had to follow it so yeah okay let's see here all right one second and and, and just scroll down on that page there is an ad there for a movie that just needs oh. to yeah that one, the gamers. Anyone who hasn't <laughs> seen the gamers, you need to see it. I think it's still available on Amazon. You can order DVD or something. And it's it's fantastic. It's the best. It's good. Oh, it's fantastic. It's hilarious fun. It's it's yeah. It's about a college, a group of college students who play D and D, and and it's basically an introduction video. If you want to show someone who doesn't know what D and D or role playing is, what D and D actually is show them the gamers they we will, had they will yeah we had carlos on and he came on and was talking and we have will yeah. on and everyone else and now we have malden on and awesome this yeah. is fantastic that's awesome we Hello. got the whole crew tonight it is, it's good to yep. see you dennis yep uh so, so so i can really recommend the gamers it's it's a great okay. movie there is a follow-up done too that that i've i've seen but I'm, i don't think it was that good the, the first one is better but it's, that yeah, i it's, haven't it's, seen <laughs> oh, you you need to see it. You need to watch it. It's yeah. a low budget. Yeah, they they are. Yeah, Justinius get gets it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So cool. Very cool. Yep. Oh yeah. You if you haven't seen them, you really it's a they're a treat. So so yeah. So what? I'm not sure if you can watch them online at some service or something, but yeah. 
but you can definitely get them from from i think you can order the dvds on amazon i'm going to see if i can find them here yeah so um yeah so avon is stewart right avon vendors stewart kerrigan there we go now i remember so here's my issue with these these look great but I'm not in my campaign having the, the Loth and the and the Giants and the Spider Queen or whatever else come and take over Isvin so I can run these, right? And so yeah. um, that's where um, Sean Reynolds is in Gamers too, according to uh, Stuart. Cool. Uh, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to paste the priest. link. Uh, it's, <laughs> I'm going to pay. This is a link to Amazon. You can rent um, gamers if you're an Amazon Prime member. You can rent it for for two bucks. They do have a <laughs> they have a Twitch channel too. Okay. Yep. They have so uh, Tino. Maybe I'll reach out to them. See if they want to do stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll, yep. I'll reach out. The gamers <laughs> darkness rising. Okay. Yeah, so so you can you can rent it, watch it cool. for two bucks, or you can buy it for five bucks. The minimalist city design. No, I agree. Yeah, the minimalist. City, you're you're absolutely correct, uh, Dennis. Well, you got to remember. Uh, you know, you went to the utmost length to improve on Greyhawk City there, which is awesome in itself. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there's this map again. Everything here has been placed. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, this is part two. We're not going to get to part three this week. And if we don't have a guest, we'll continue this and we'll we'll talk about it next week. That's a great picture there. In fact, mm -hmm. that is, looks as almost as good as that. Um, there's a there's a Reaper miniature looking almost exactly like that that we have oh. painted that Bill painted up uh, from I think it was from Bones Four. Um, I don't know if it was Bones Five, but it's that's a yeah some really nice female uh, frost giants. Um, yep. So. Tina, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll look into. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see if the Tina whisper uh, me, whisper me to Twitch channel if you don't mind, please. That'd be awesome. Yo, me, I'm, I'll always make an attempt. I'll reach out. Shadow the Abyss still going on. Anyone run these? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's not a. That's the one thing with these. You have to this. You may be able to tweak these around so that Isvin is not in hands of, of vileness, but probably to run this, you're going to have to have it that way. So, yeah. And there's it's, they're long and they're they got a lot of detail and they're great. So no no negatives on uh, um, gliodite gliodites or um, drow rogue fighter. Got to got to appreciate the poison on the weapon too. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow of the Abyss continues onward, onward, concluding. Like you said, there's a lot of I, of Greyhawk in this one. Absolutely. Oh. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, here comes the last one. Yep. The only <laughs> one I does, ran. And it doesn't get more Greyhawk than this. <laughs> yep. This for me is out of 982. By the way, we're 18 away from that 1,000th adventure. This was number 729 mm -hmm. I ran. Throne of Ayus. And here is, Anna, the one that we could not figure out. And I'm going to risk crashing now. Okay. I'll yep. risk it. Well, you have a new point. machine. It, yeah, it I shouldn't it. at this point. It uh, can but, handle but, it. Um, oh, there was one settlement we didn't know where it came from. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, in the ah, gotcha. That serpent mound. Remember, like, what's the serpent mound? Yeah. Well, that's what. The, 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 ah, here it is. From the, yep. here it is. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yep, it's on that map. So, yep. yep, yep. There we go. Yep. Can you run this in Eberron? Uh, I don't know. I I don't see why not. Um, <laughs> well, you can make. Uh, I use will be so pleased if you have him uh, run yeah. and and have a thrown in another uh, realm Nag too. Nagoya, it's right. It. Nagoya, this is right near the Nefile Glades. So it's yeah. exactly where it is. So um, I ran this one and uh, some nice map. And there you can see it. You can see the Serpent Mound. And that's where Anna put that Serpent's Mound there. Yep. Uh, uh, right I need there. to read this adventure again. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. As you I can see, the raising line is still there. And... The raising yep. line is showing up here in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. 
And here's the Serpent Mound overview as you're going downward and downward and downward. It's a neat thing. I mean, th these are these occur all over the place in the United States. They have these Serpent Mountains all over, you know, which is really neat. Uh, mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Who wrote this? Hang on a second. John uh, Simcoe. Okay. I don't know who that is. This is yep. January 2000. We're in 2005 now. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember I had my uh, Vespi Forest group, the high level group, run this. Um, Eleanor and uh, those guys uh, up there who have uh, the Keep the Eagle's Nest. It's the most remote. Um, Oh, uh, and here's the throne. I think the throne's right here, twelve at the end of the uh, serpent's head. If I recall. Okay. Yeah. So. Um. And uh, but it's definitely for higher levels. I think the characters were tenth and eleventh when I ran this. I got a, a holy symbol I love that, visor. That, yeah, I love that holy symbol. Looks really, really cool. It looks like it's uh, ancient, right? Yeah. But it's he's older, been yeah. around for a few hundred years, so yep. so he 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 might have been experiment with his PR department <laughs> over the years. Yeah, yeah. Milo looks uh, pretty beat up there. Yeah, that's yeah. a gnome, male gnome bard cleric. Yeah, that, that's, oh, a, okay. that's a beat up uh, he, gnome. He looks like he's seen better days. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but there's some fan there's some really cool illustrations in this one. I love that there's a general uh, a portrait of a general in here that I need to steal his idea. Is his face and 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 the I need to I need to use him in one of my adventures. That's for sure. So if I recall, um, this is they're kind of trying to. Um, the, it's actually um, the slot or yeah, King Bog One Eye. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's have... actually the mm -hmm. slaughter attempting to uh, um, yep. create this, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, which is interesting. It's an interesting well, I guess take. he will take help from anyone. Yeah, who, who promote his? Yeah, he's not fussy as long as yep. they do what he wants. Then, then he doesn't care much. I yeah. think that's the whole idea with I use. Yeah. You got Oh, almost, I love that. I love yeah, that. That that yeah. is such an awesome illustration. Yeah, with the skull of uh, Oh yeah, it, it looks oh it looks fantastic. Yeah. Yep. yep. General Grouse. Yep. So Yep. But Orc so he's like sixteenth level. That's pretty nasty. Yeah. Um Shimmeras and all you know, and so uh yeah. you got um you got your standard demons with a twist on it, making it uh, mm -hmm. instead of demons and you know, high level orcs. You got uh, uh, you got a couple, but you have uh, the slot connection here, which is interesting. Yeah, and then you got to go into it, and it goes down and down and down, and uh, yep. yep, yep. And here, see, it mm -hmm. goes all the way down. It's almost That's all, cool. Yeah, it's it's a neat it's a neat. <clears> thing. So yep. Yep, rocks type one type one demon. Yep. Yeah, it's like a vulture demon. Yep. yep, and you get down to the base, right, uh, of that. And so this is uh, I we my group enjoyed this. So uh -huh. King Bog One Eye Titanic Awakened Mail Toad Horizon Walker. It's a mouthful. Uh, Four hundred. <laughs> it's a third edition. They're, yeah. they're usually mouthfuls when it comes to high level NPCs. Yeah, yeah very tired. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so um, it was. A, I recall it was a really nasty fight. I mean, you got some crazy spells. Call lightning storm is really disgusting. Um, and then, you, you, see, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of uh, of orc druids at the point, but you know, I would make them shamans instead. But that's all right. Uh, you know, it was. It was a. Um, a lot of these, and this is just me. But I like end fights where there's enough minions to protect the big baddie from like getting from the adventuring party with six or six characters. You know what I mean? So I, I like having the minions all out there, as you've seen in my setups. So, but uh, but yeah, blister mail doll. Uh, having a boar with ninety-seven hit points is kind of disgusting too. Advanced carryated columns. There's plenty of guardians here. So, oh, dice corner, Skagath. Hello, welcome. Another monk-free uh, discussion tonight. <laughs> yeah, so far. Yeah. Yep. So here's the thing. Uh, John Simcoe visited the real Serpent Mound, a quarter-mile-long Native American effigy in Adams County, Ohio, to research his adventure. That's really cool. So he took something real here. 
It also tells you where you could place it. You could also place it in the high forest in the Forgotten Realms. And I use could be replaced by half fiend, harf, and orc, druid, and malar. There you go. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But you definitely want to destroy the, the throne because you don't want Ayus coming uh, here and, uh, and, and, and taking and utilizing it. So, um, an orc blood weapon quality, too. That's interesting. So, I liked it. Um, I like a challenge of a high level adventure. Oh, as always, um, my guys, uh, you know, uh, well, we haven't gone back to the Vespi that much. Um, we should do more Vespi adventuring, but we just haven't lately. Been concentrating on Altamir and other stuff, you know. So, more mastering the game. Look at that, 850. Oh, and it's uncanny, isn't it? I only yeah. did four tonight. Mm -hmm. I got it like all nailed. Um, talking Dungeon Craft. Alert the watch. I have to pack everyone. Uh, I got to get on a plane tomorrow morning to Austin, Texas. <laughs> so I haven't done that yet, but that's all right. Art and other fancy loot. So adding some other things in here, which is really cool. So these back issues and these 10 issues um, giving you some just ideas on uh, miscellaneous stuff is neat. Here's something on Arithnal. Pilgrims on the Road by Mike Merles. So, let's see. Uh, here's someone posing as a cleric of Baca, but he's actually an Arithnal disciple. Look, Hexter. So, what they do, this is, they got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Cord, Obadai, St. Cuthbert, Ouija, Pelor, and Narol. All in this article here by Mike Merles about uh, pilgrims of those deities, which oh, is a neat okay. idea. Yeah, yeah, that is a great idea. Uh, Mike is still at uh, Watsy there. Still there. I uh, uh, last time I talked to him was at Gary Con last year. Mm -hmm. Yep. There. <laughs> <laughs> Your art is memorable. And th so this Larsa Essenol, I looked at this and I was like, it's, this is obviously Wayne Reynolds' art. but you can Oh, yeah. Tell. You but can see it even says that. Yeah. Dragon Assassin. There's no, this is so generic here. He's a dragon hunter, basically. <laughs> um, th this is meant for all campaigns because I went through this and I could not find any, I was hoping this was a Greyhawk character but it appears to be a gen general character like she's not placed anywhere so here's her stat she's a ranger and dragon stalker which i guess is a prestige class in third edition i guess so yeah was something yeah. well so um but uh, there's no specifics here there's no reason you couldn't use her um as a yeah they're going for yep it appears in it she works for Turash. Mm -hmm. where does it say that does it say that or is that in your campaign there, Will? It doesn't. But okay. She's calc neutral. CN, so, uh, you know, you could probably uh, for hire. You would have, yeah, yeah that's cool. A dra well, I would have her probably as a freelancer somewhere where there are still a lot of dragons in Greyhawk. But a possibility of, of use of, of something that they have done for you. And that yeah. would be it. There's another Will Wheaton at the end. <laughs> Did I go buy it? Oh, here it it's is. A, yeah. Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> hmm. So there you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Alrighty. So. And by the way, some of these have the actual, um, what do you call it, the uh, um, web enhancements attached to them. Oh, yeah, some of them attached to them. Yeah, yep. which mm -hmm. is good because you get really nice pictures in the back here. Of, of yep. These. So that's that's good to see. All righty. So, really, thank you, Carlos, for coming on. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great have him hopping on we haven't been to the main screen most of the night here so 
I agree, John. Uh, first level does not suck, but it could suck if you were had a DM who wouldn't let you. Like I do maximum hit points at first level. Mm-hmm. I just do, um, and just <laughs> you know, and you gotta you gotta make it so that the adventures aren't that lethal. You know that they're more of problem solving or whatever. You know, first levels, yeah, always max at first. Yeah. So uh, that was a good one tonight, Anna. We got through mm-hmm. uh, some really neat things. I gave my opinions yeah. on the top, my top 12 for my campaign just because of the way they were run and what beyond it. And you said, yours may be different, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you have yeah. different opinions than I do. I'm sure almost everyone has different opinions. Like, Gitano's is Tomb of Horrors, and, you know, um, and uh, and then Rich's is uh, Lost City. Just kidding. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, so... <laughs> And then there's probably someone who even loves Doom Grinder. So, well, I'm sure there's someone who loves that too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh! Can you imagine that one? So, um, other than that, just note, uh, I'll be gone three days, and I'll be getting back three o'clock on Wednesday, roughly, and then going right into five straight days of streaming. But then I'm done work for the year, so I'll be I'll, I'll be uh, um. Well, why don't we do shout-outs first, and then uh, we'll yeah. talk about that. So, Anna, what's going on with you? Uh, Excel. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm index, index, index. I'm, I'm so tired of, of working in Excel now. I don't want to see it in my life again. So never so. again. No, no. So, but, but I'm, I'm halfway through. So, so I'm, I'm, yeah. But when it comes to work-wise, I'm, I'm on map forty something. So, so I'm, 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 ha- I'm halfway through because Hipmona Land doesn't have that many and down south. So I'm, 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 get, I'm getting, I'm starting to see a possibility of this ending, so to speak. But I probably have another two weeks of, or a week or, or something like that. But I'm going to, to, um, yeah. I know, Rich, but you love this, and you and you 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 must love it. I'm I'm not that masochistic when it comes to <laughs> so so um, yeah. So I'm I'm yeah. So I'm doing this as a service. And Dwayne Costa, I love you. Yeah, because he he helped me done this twice so before. So so awesome. he, he is my hero that helped me. But he, unfortunately, he couldn't do it this time. So I'm I'm working on it. So 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 um, <sighs> yep. So, so, and it is a great program. It's not no question about it. Now, I, I've, I've liked using it before, and I'll probably use like using it again in the future. But right now, I'm like, this is tedious. But there's two good things with it. First of all, we get an index that is up to date, and secondly, I find a lot of stuff that is wrong on my maps because I actually go oh. over and look look at every damn label over the whole oh map. Oh my gosh! And it's four thousand something so far, and and there's more more counting, so to speak. So, so it's. Um, over four thousand so far, so so that that's the the um uh, so the good thing. But I I will I will t- in a in a day or two I will take a break and do some some other stuff. We had a successful uh, live stream on Friday, me and Linda and I worked on on start texturing the Altimira map. Yes. <clears throat> so so that was so I'm going to take a break in in a day or so and and just take a day off from from uh, doing the index and and do something else for a day or two, because otherwise my sanity will I, I will go bunk if I just stare at the same thing it's <clears throat> so, so so there will be other things going in I, I need to because but if you wonder why heck I haven't published anything or done done anything that's because I'm, I'm going through the index so so yeah so so that that's the that's the big thing well that's cool Anna. and uh just note um we got a lot going on though I mean, we, oh, yes. we, 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 we have a lot going on here this yep. week, which is great, which is going to be. Uh, I, I uh, submitted uh, uh, my own seminar as well on for GaryCon. So I haven't got it approved yet, but it's 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 in the submission process. Very so cool. apart from, apart from the uh, fantasy mapping show and and the, uh, the the all the other cool stuff that we're doing, both me and Jay and Alyssa and various others together, I will have my own little event as well. That's great. Yep. Excellent. So, I'll be gone three days, come back. We're still going to have Legends Lore Wednesday, and the topic yeah. uh, uh, is going to be uh, where we would adventure, you know, d- discussing some options, uh, mm-hmm. you know, places. A- areas to adventure in, if you want to, to homebrew your adventures, where to go and why. Yeah. 
And so uh, that'll be good because then I can just roll scroll around on the map and I don't have to do much planning yep. mm-hmm. getting home that late. So yep. that'll be good for Wednesday. Thursday night, don't I? Uh, you know, my guys are saying, what are we pl- doing Thursday? I have no idea. I, I don't. I had an adventure last night I had to worry about. And by the way, thank you for all the support. It was awesome. It was a fun time. Um, you know, it was great for that for that con. But um, yep. yeah. Um, you exactly. can wing something for Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to wing something for Thursday because mm-hmm. – Yep. Here's a couple. I have a couple of these done, right? But just because they've been out there, and I, I haven't even gotten the title for. Um, so Thursday, Friday night, is the holiday cheer episode for the Fantasy Mapping Show. Um, we will have at least twelve giveaways. That's what I know. At least twelve. I already got the Frog God ones in. Chuck is you you know usually a little behind, but um, it's not a problem. So we're gonna have at least twelve giveaways this year. Uh, Stephen Chenault will be on, and Edwin will be on from, uh, I believe it's Edwin, uh, for Frog God, and we'll talk about more mm-hmm. mapping and things going on, uh, and that'll be Friday, and I'll listen myself, and then, so we go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, and then Gavin next Sunday. Saturday morning is the our special 9 a.m. event, a Battletech game, uh, you know, we'll have uh, we'll have our group uh, that has adventured twice together, and we'll have that. We'll just do it, throw in a little different thing uh, than Greyhawk in here uh, by request. You know, every six to nine months, I usually run one. So uh, we'll, we're going to do that. On um, I've been playing a little MechWare online here and there with this new machine, just to see how powerful this machine is. And oh my gosh, mm-hmm. no, you know, no, it's, it runs pretty well. And uh, and that's it. And then we'll have a Gabin next Sunday. So I got five streams. And next uh, next week, uh, and I'm not really, uh, you know, with this uh, is mentioned. <laughs> yes, it's a big, it's a big crab, the king crab. There, you, you're absolutely yep. correct. So um, let's uh, let's do the giveaway tonight. Uh, you get your choice of uh, two of these. Hey, Bones, how you doing there? Bones's character was one of two that went up. Chucks and Bones is both leveled from um, from last night, which is cool. All right, last call for the sign-up for the drawing. Uh, I have a Scarlet Brotherhood here. I have a Treasures of Greyhawk. And then we can do some other adventures, too. Uh, I do have a Morning Cans Fantastic Adventure here, too, in a reprint. So I uh, get some good things. Uh, plus, I got um, Cast Rising and uh, Abyss Floor from Sword and Sorcery, which are great games, too. So uh, here we go. I'm going to close this out. And then we're going to find someone to raid into. I don't think Bones is, uh, Darling's on tonight. It doesn't look like okay. it. <sighs> oh, oh, is that tonight? Uh, how long does that have to go still? All right, I'll raid into that then. Yeah, uh, that's even, a good Even though Girl it's Superior not Greyhawk, great. yeah, I'll raid into Girl Superior then tonight. Yeah, yeah, okay. but he, they, they're doing Greyhawk, and he's a great friend. So, yeah, he's yeah. doing Greyhawk. Uh, but I think tonight is Blade Runner, but that doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yep. yeah. All right, here, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, do the giveaway. See who wins tonight. Uh, and then I got, I got to pack this up tonight, actually. Because I got to, because, you know, I'm going to be gone for those those three the close entries. Winner, winner. Keith Rogier, Rogier. Oh, Keith, rats. you gotta let me know what two you want. There, um, out of the, you know, uh, uh, give me a. Uh, you want Scholar Brother to Treasures of Greyhawk and then an adventure, and then we'll uh, we'll get you know, get them out. I gotta get them out. Um, like, I gotta pack it tonight. All right. Which one? Which one of those two? Treasures or Scarlet Brotherhood? And then uh, I got Salt Marsh, uh, Baldrin's Beacon, Silver Princess. I got some good adventures there. So um, Raiders of the Black Ice. Yeah, Raiders of the Black Ice is Dungeon One Fifteen, and mm-hmm. I actually ran that. Yep, that's a good one too. Treasures. All right, Treasures, and then um, uh, and then let's. Uh, um, do you got Salt Marsh? You got Silver Palace of the Silver Princess Salt Marsh. Good, easy enough. Two blue ones. All right, everyone. Anna, thanks a lot. Hope oh, you have a good you. week. I'll see. You. Yep. I, I will have my uh, uh, iPad and my phone, so if something goes up, I'll, I'll check Discord mm-hmm. occasionally. Um, yep. uh, yeah, I don't know him, Orchid, and uh, I appreciate their recommendation, but I got I got a partner in um, 
Um, I, I got a, um, a partner streamer in Guild Superior, and I got 40 people on, and it's a finale. So I'm gonna raid into I'm gonna raid into them tonight and uh, and give them uh, give them a little love. But I appreciate the suggestion, and uh, maybe we can do it in the future. Um, everyone, thanks a lot. See you all soon. Yep. Thank yeah, you. thank you. I, I, I hate traveling, but I got to do it. Work calls, you know, the end of the year here. Let's set the rate yep. up real quick. Yeah, and Darling's playing the game, too. So we get like 90 in, that would be awesome. So I'm immediately going from here to packing, so huh. yeah, I'm going to get some sleep. Five, four, three, two, one. See you Wednesday. Have a good one. 79, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, it went through. It took a little while, but now it's through. Yeah. Thanks, Anna.